You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Good morning. Great to be with you this morning on Bassmaster Live for the St. Croix Bassmaster Opens. The open at Lake Washita in the state of Arkansas. Live coverage by Maxim. Of course, presented by Seven. We are looking very much forward to this third day of three days of angling here. We started out with 199 pros. And we are down to 10 on this day. Let's take you to Arkansas on the first time in 20, more than 20 years for a Bassmaster event at this place, the biggest lake inside the state of Arkansas. That is Lake Washita on the Washita River. About 40,000 acres and a, a, a big challenge, about 1,000 miles of shoreline, and it's going to be a lot of fun today. Again, this is the third day championship Saturday out there for our 10 anglers who are left in the mix, and there they are right there. That is their weight to start the day. Two Arkansans on top, Jeremiah Kendi with a pound plus advantage over Matt Baker. Uh, Andrew Hargrove of Texas, Logan Johnson from Alabama, Christian Ostrander all the way from California, Evan Kung from Ontario, Canada, Andy Newcomb from Missouri, uh, Lake of the Ozarks, Paul Marks from Georgia, Zach Gutrema from also the state of New York, and Blake Schroeder from Texas. A good, diverse lineup here. I think we've got a big day ahead of us. A lot of fun watching the goings on here at this very, very interesting body of water, Lake Washita. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studios here, presented by Sponsor sponsored by Marathon. I'm Tommy Sanders here, and I want to introduce our special guest today, providing the analysis, Stetson Blaylock. Stetson Blaylock about to start his eighth season as an elite, elite uh, angler, and also fishing your fifth. Congratulations on that, Bassmaster Classic. That's coming up as well. But the main reason you're here is because we're on your home lake. Yeah, and uh, a lot of people's asked me why I'm not fishing this tournament, and uh, there's there's no real reason other than I just wanted to start the Elite Series season off with a clear mind, uh, not having three tournaments back to back to back. And Washita's hard to win on. Uh, it's a lake that's very, uh, it changes every day. It changes by the minute a lot of times. I feel confident there, but uh, for me, I've got bigger things in mind, and uh, the Elite Series is right around the corner. Well, 10 guys are very, very happy that you made that decision. <laughs> We're happy that you did, too, because we get you here. But uh, Ronnie Moore also with us, and Ronnie, you've been spending some time down at the lake this week. Man, it's been a tale of two days in totally opposite weather. On Thursday, day one of this event, I could have got a suntan. It was around 70 degrees, sunny and calm all day long. And then day two, the storm stink came in, cloudy, a little bit colder, and then the wind really kicked up the last three hours of the day, right around when weigh-in started at 3 o'clock, blowing all through the night. So we'll see what, what lake we wake up to today. But I'll say the X-Factor deal is today, we had a 914 Big Bass weighed in on day one, and we had a 10-pound, 14-ounce Big Bass weighed in yesterday, with the top 10 all being separated by only four pounds. It's anyone's game. You could be oh, out of it in the last cast of the day, you could win this tournament. Yeah, that's what we're looking forward to. Very much so today. Such, Mike Sukon is with us as well. He delivers the daily limit to us on an almost daily basis. You have been spending time at the lake. Oh, also. yeah. Riley, we had a 25 degree drop in temperature from the start of the way into the end of it. But out on the water, guys said that really ignited the fish. They got a lot of their fish in the last couple hours. Stetson, were you kind of surprised that you saw such big bass, the 10 14 coming out of Lake Awachita? Yeah, you just don't see that many giant bass. I know they're in there, um, and I've caught a few really nice fish, some seven and eight pounders, but it's that time of year. You know, anytime you get that that early pre-spawn, those fish are feeding up, getting ready to uh, to make their move. And so, yeah, a 10 pounder, yes, but big fish, no, it's full of big ones. Big, big dynamic potential out there today. Very much looking forward to it. We're gonna show you some of our weigh-in from it yesterday when we got our Ooh. top 10. Zach, Zach Gutrema from New York with the almost 11 pound bass. That is remarkable. It was absolutely crazy. The, the, the deal is, is you see these guys who have 19, 20, 21 pound bags, but you have to evaluate what's in that bag. For Zach's 22 pound bag, half of it was one fish. Same thing for Evan Kung on day one. We'll keep an eye on those who are really consistent, like Andy Newcomb, who has kind of brought in similar weights each day, just like Matt Baker has as well. There's Evan Kung from Canada right there. He's having a great season, that is for sure. Got a Delta guy, Christian Ostrander. Ish Monroe knows him real well. Logan Johnson, if you remember the days of Alabama college fishing, he is one to keep note of. And Andrew Hargrove, the last four opens dating back to last year and this year, he has been on fire as well. Absolutely on a roll. We got some top performers of, of the year in our top 10 here. And there is Matt Baker in second place. And your leader there, Jeremiah Kendi from Benton, Arkansas. Familiar sounding place there, I think, mm -hmm. to some of us here. <laughs> 
Let's take a look at our hummingbird lay of the lake right now. And there it is, as we say, 40,000 acres, the first impoundment on the Ouachita River as it flows down out of the upper Ouachita Mountains here. And, uh, very, very interesting place. About a 70-year-old impoundment. It's a great, great uh, destination for boaters and vacationers. And uh, really, uh, although the Bassmasters have not been here since 2020, uh, 20, uh, 2002, it is a great fishing and a tournament destination as well. One thing, Stetson, that you can speak to, 40,000 acres, but now with Lake Washita, fish is much bigger with the technology we have. There's a lot of deep open water that was unfishable in the past years. Now anglers can probe that water. Yeah, and I, I would step out and say that that lake is actually three lakes. You can break that place down in three different fisheries, in my opinion. You've got the three rivers on the west end. You've got uh, the lower end by the dam, what I call that, the clear end. And then you've got that, that sweet section, which is the middle section for me. Everybody said leading up to this tournament, very hard to, to put two days exactly alike together here. I think if you look at the leaderboard, you see consistency lacked, but this has the recipe. Lake Washita does standing timber, submerged vegetation, rock. You got 45 degree banks. You can go get the colored water uh, up the rivers like Stetson was talking about, especially when we've had all these rains that we've had. And then uh, obviously you've maybe got some brush, you know, uh, shoreline brush and, and brush piles to fish as well in that intermediate depth range as well. Most of our anglers have talked about having a dirty water and a clear water plant for this lake here. We got our anglers awaiting takeoff, supposed to take place in just a few minutes right here from the, uh, the Brady Mountain facility there, the recreation area. Let's hear from our leader. How are you feeling this morning, Jeremiah? Uh, pretty pumped up. I've, uh, I've put in right here probably, I don't know, thousand something times, you know, in my life. So. I'm looking forward to it. Another day in Washita. Jeremiah Kendi, as you mentioned, Ronnie has not fished a, 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 a Bassmaster event since 2002, but that was right here. He's he's been keeping himself busy, pro fishing though in the in the interim for sure. Stetson, you said you knew him. He seemed pretty calm, cool, collected at weigh in, but it is a little emotional when you launch at a place you've launched it a thousand times, but now. There's a possible class, classic berth on the line and $50,000. Yeah, and, and Jeremiah, he's that, that's Jeremiah right there. You're not going to see anything different from, from him all day long. I, I know exactly what's going through his mind. He knows exactly what's, what's about to take place. This lake changes so much. He knows that he has to go out there and do exactly what he's been doing, and that's being consistent, upper teens, catch a good bag, and hope somebody from behind doesn't come, come through with another 8, 9, 10-pound bass. Again, he uh, claimed he didn't have a fish yesterday until noon. That'll kind of wear your nerves down a little bit, won't it? Said he called out four fish when that wind hit in the last hour. What I love about Lake Washita is that you can, you're gonna see multiple types of fishing today. You're gonna see guys electronics based, fishing offshore, maybe some live scope in there, obviously. And then you're gonna see just straight up fishing, chatter baits, crank baits, spinner baits, things like that as well. I shot a Paul Marks there from Cumming, Georgia, Lake Lanier guy, having a fantastic season. Yeah. So far, good outing All at Lake right. Okeechobee. He's our EQ points leader. If it were to end today, he would be joining Stetson Blaylock on the Elite Series, but we do know we've got not only today, we've got seven <laughs> more events after this to get it done. Our EQ is elite qualifying. The hopefuls to make it onto the very top level of Bassmaster Fishing, the Bassmaster Elite Series, and they have to fish all nine events in order to make that happen. And, and the vast majority of our 199 pros were part of that program when we started two days ago. We couldn't have had a better start to our season, Lake Okeechobee, a little bit warmer than it is right now, but the big bass, they all have shown up in the first couple of events. And we've seen some guys show consistency. That guy right there, Andy Newcomb, jumped in Lake of the Ozarks, his home lake last year, notched a top 10 and said, you know what, in 2024, I want to fish all nine and try to make the Elite Series and got off to a top 20 finish at Okeechobee and now sitting in the top 10. He'll be one to keep an eye on all year long. He's proven it at every step of the way for local, regional, and now on his path to a national spotlight. Stetson, on the Elite Series, everywhere the Bassmasters fish, we have big lakes that fish small, we have small lakes that fish big. Where would you put uh, Washita on that list? So Washita fish is pretty big, in my opinion, because you can you can go up the river, dirty water, you can stay in that middle section, and you can go to that, that south end. And what, what allows for that is you've got deep, clear water, you've got shallow, dirty water, rocks, trees, things like that, but you've also got 
uh, a lot of vegetation, a lot of standing timber out in out into 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 feet of water. So those fish can go a lot of different places. Jeremiah Kendi has got a little bit of pressure on him here. There's always pressure mm -hmm. on the hometown guy to perform, to, to put one away here. But he has certainly laid the groundwork for uh, coming away with a victory here. But uh, that's a long time from now. We've got a full day of fishing ahead, these fellows. They've actually moved the launch around to get out of the wind. There's this persistent north wind yes. blowing there at the lake. So we want a good, safe takeoff. So we'll do that. While we wait, let's take a look at the first open. I think there's a lot of excitement on that one, Ronnie Moore. Yeah, we've been to Lake Okeechobee so many different times, but this was the first time since 1991 that we had taken out of Clewiston, Florida. And if you think of Clewiston, Florida, and you don't know anything else about it, you know that that is the home of the Martin family. Roland Martin, Scott Martin, that is where they have put their roots down. And Scott Martin being able to win on his home lake in front of his family at the marina with his dad's name on it. That was something sentimental. And to do it in record-breaking fashion, it was a great week to start the Bassmaster season. Just one fish at a time, baby. Just one fish at a time. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, gosh, dude, I got her. I got her, bro. She's the monster, dude. We got to see a lot of fireworks there, Tommy. Lake Okeechobee's changed over the years, vegetation-wise, water level-wise. That's a big concern, and, and Scott Martin's been at the forefront of trying to improve and keep that lake what it is. It's a legendary body of water. On day one, we got to see him break the record for a single day weight in a Bassmaster Open competition, 33 plus pounds. And then he didn't really slouch off the rest of the week, 25 and then another 31 for a 90 pound, six ounce, three day total break in the all time three day BASS record. And why don't we just say it, he won by 21 plus pounds. That's the second most all time and most for a three day event, uh, winning margin wise. You can't, you can't, uh, he ran out of records to break. This was <laughs> actually what happened. We thought he was gonna hit a century mark for a while there yeah. with three days fishing. I mean, in an hour time period, Stetson, he caught a two, almost yeah. nine pounders, then he caught a seven, and we were like, why don't you just catch a 10 or a 12 Absolutely. and call out your last three pounder and break 100 pounds? He told me he big item a little bit. They had dropped about a pound, pound and a half of eggs, so he only came in with 31.7, which is fifth in the Ooh. opens list, top wow. five weights. That's it. Scott said it took a lot of patience. That was his watchword throughout the entire thing, keeping his head down, not moving around much, keeping it in that area. That was the key place right there, Harney Pump. And yeah, you fished here, Stetson, and you know that when you get in an area where there's fish, there may be a bunch of anglers, but you just need to, you don't need to pull your trolling motor up and run a whole bunch. You need to stay there. He was around 50 or 60 anglers all week long until that final day. We got to see five different areas at Okeechobee, Tommy. Five areas with two anglers apiece on that final day, including the Rim Canal, South Bay, Harney Pond was where it got done. Scott Martin punched his ticket to the Bassmaster Classic next year, which we just announced. So now he knows. Yes, that's where right. He knows where we're going. Well, there's one more look at our leaderboard. Before we get underway here, the takeoff is just around the corner. Two Arkansans on top looking to stay up there. Jeremiah Kendi and Matt Baker. Andrew Hargrove of Texas. Logan Johnson from Alabama. California's Christian Ostrander. Evan Kung, Kung from Canada. Nuka, Mark, Scutramo, we'll see them all in action today. The takeoff is coming up next. The St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Lake Washita, presented by Seven, is sponsored by Ranger Boats, by Rapala, and by Yamaha. All set to get underway here on Lake Washita here in Western Arkansas Championship Saturday. Want to show you some incredible footage from yesterday, day number two. Zach Gutramont of New York there with a 10 go. pound Holy 14 moly. ouncer. Listen to this 10 pounds at 14 ounces, almost an 11 pounder. It was honestly crazy. I had about six pounds at about noon and then uh, dropped on that one and it came up honestly quick and then took me down to the timber. <laughs> it's a miracle I even got the thing back out of there. Pound line? Eight pound line. Holy moly, they got you in the wood and everything? Oh, yeah, yeah. What a thrill. Man. I mean, from Lake Washita, us Arkansas <laughs> folks go, wow, now that is something. I was walking sure. down the dock and said, Zach, you catch him today? He said, yeah, I got like 22 pounds. And I said, that is fantastic. He said, I think I got like an 11 pounder. And I was like, well, you lead with the 11 pounder. Let me know you have the 11 pounder first. And the weigh in kind of turned up from there. It was rumblings, and everyone wanted to come see a 1014 out of Lake Washita. 
Zach Gutramo starting this day in ninth place out of our 10 anglers out there today. Starting in third place, one of our two Texas anglers, that is Andrew Hardgrove. I'm, I'm fired up, man. It's championship Saturday. Um, sitting in third place, about three pounds behind the leader. Um, had some weather come in yesterday afternoon, so I'm excited. Anything can happen. This is one of them days that anybody has a shot to win. I mean, guys that have been catching them might not, and guys that just barely squeaked in could have a really big day today. So super excited. It's anybody's game. Tommy, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Andrew Hargrove is a little inaccurate this week. He broke his scale in practice, so he hasn't been weighing his bag, so he's been about two pounds lighter. He's about two pounds light on his deficit as well. He's only a pound and a half behind, so Andrew, don't be oh. so negative. You're right there, yes. one and a half pounds out of the lead. It's the perfect setup. It is. Absolutely, no doubt about it. Andrew Hargrove got some momentum going, too. Finished last year with a fifth place, a top five at uh, the Harris Chain. So. Uh, Good, good on him and a good start as well. A good uh, solid finish down at Lake Okeechobee. So we will have our eyes on Andrew Hargrove throughout the course of this day. Again, we have 10 anglers ready to go. All but two of them, the top two are EQs or elite qualifying hopefuls. So it's a very, very important day for them in order to keep their season on track. You gotta finish in the top nine if you wanna make it to the Bassmaster Elite Series. This is live at takeoff time and we are just about there. We've got some boats going right now. They did pop around from where the takeoff was supposed to be around to the other side of the point where it's much more protected from the wind. So it does sound like those who wanted wind suits will get win today as we count down single you know digit it. seconds before takeoff. Hey, Stetson, the game and fish was there. They took fin clips or they, they took a little sample of those two big bass to check. They've been stocking Florida strain largemouth in Washington since 2008 like 100,000 every other year, and they want to check if, the, if their efforts are working. They were smiling, so they think they are. Oh, wow. Fourth place, Alabama 33 four. It's Logan Johnson. There's Zach Gutramon. <coughs> Zach from New York State, from across the border in Canada. We've also got Evan Kung, so we have an international element in our top 10 today. And Stetson, we talk about going from 200 boats to 10 boats. Is that a huge advantage? Is that going to open up some things? It will, yeah. it's. I know for sure the guys like Jeremiah that are wanting to run around and fish a lot of different places, and, and, and those guys know so much about the lake that having more open water is really going to play into their, fact, uh, into their hand. And I can tell you right now, that one right there wants the wind. I know what he's doing and uh, the way he's fishing, and, and that lake just sets up for the wind makes those big ones get up there and bite. That was the key thing in his interview yesterday. He is not fishing a spot, Tommy. He is fishing a pattern. Rarely do we see pattern fishing at times, but because he's a local, history can hurt you. But with Jeremiah having so many places to fish, he's been able to duplicate this and at least run and hit some spots to either salvage a limit or, hey, this looks exactly like another place. I'm going to go and try to duplicate that. We are underway now, and it won't be too long before uh, the anglers who are starting close will be set up and getting ready to produce something on this day. Maybe something that will put them on top, get them into the World Championship, the Bassmaster Classic, if they can engineer a win. It is cold out there this morning. It is about 30 degrees at the start of the day. Going to be a persistent north wind as well, but not, not too heavy today, not like it was yesterday at, at the weigh-in time. It got to You could get plenty of fresh air at the weigh-in yesterday, I think. That's a look at Lake Washita. Actually, the leader in our EQ points coming into uh, the second event yep. of the season here. Uh, because Scott Martin is not part of that already sure. in the Elite Series, it uh, reverted to second place. Tucker Smith, one of the most decorated high school and college anglers of all time, and had a terrific tournament at Lake Okeechobee. Yeah, I saw his father in the weigh-in parking lot yesterday and, and said, I'm almost getting tired of saying that he's the most decorated youth angler in Bassmaster history, but three high school championships, a college championship this year, he's been team of the year, he won a million dollar tournament in this part of the country, and he had a good solid finish uh, this week at Washita to stay in the mix because of his second place finish at Lake Okeechobee, he got off to a great start. And honestly, Stetson, you can do this. You can find your style of fishing at almost any lake in the country, and they did that. They found some biting fish in the Rim Canal, a lot less pressure 
structured fish as well. Yeah, and, I, and I, I've known Tucker for a long time as well, and, and he reminds me so much of a young version of myself and the way he fishes and the style of things that he does and, and getting away from the crowds and trying to find his own thing. And uh, I, he's got a very, very bright future ahead of him for sure. We were commenting all through our coverage there that he he acts like he's been there before he because has. he has he's yes. won so many times he's been the he's been in the boat more times at the Bassmaster Classic but he hasn't fished it because back in the day he was the first one as a high school champion with uh, you know with academy and whatnot to lead the boats out lead the yeah. classic anglers out and he's been so close three times he's had the chance to make the Bassmaster Classic and he has finished second in all of those Okeechobee and two college classic brackets it's only a matter of time until we see Tucker Smith at the Bassmaster Classic. Again, Tucker was second place at Okeechobee. Watch out. Randall Tharp, former elite uh, angler, was in second place, so uh, good on him. Had a little Let's more difficulty here at uh, Washita. Really weird to see them in second and third, 21 to 22 pounds behind the winning weight, but they both averaged 23 pounds a day <laughs> at Okeechobee. They had a great, great week. Tucker Smith finished 33rd here this week. He kind of knocked down about six in the uh, EQ points. Tucker Smith and Eastern, Easton Fothergill, who yes. met in the, the Classic Bracket Championship this past year, were both in our top 10. And Easton just missed it by one slot. Yes, he almost went back to back guys. top 10s for him. Paul Marks is the only one who did make a top 10 at Okeechobee and is in the top 10 this week. That's the kind of thing we talked about. If you finished in the 90s or 100 or 110, you're wondering, do I still have a shot to make the Elite Series? The deal, the deal when you're looking at the points race is how many anglers, not at the top, but how many have finished in the top 50 after the first two events? Because when you have 20 to 25 anglers who've done that, that's a lot of people who have high point totals. As we start to go through each event, you'll start to have that narrow down and see who really starts to pull away. But so far, we have a good grouping of 20 or so that have done that, top 50 in both events. All right, we understand that uh Two of our anglers have found their spot. They are set up, ready to go. That is second place Matt Baker from Glenwood, Arkansas, about 30 minutes down the road from Lake Washita. He says though Lake Washita is not his home lake, so I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to figure out what might be. Went to school in Russellville, maybe it's starting now. I, I'm pretty sure Lake Greeson is oh, Greeson. his home okay. lake. Yeah, I, I think he spends a lot of time there. Guides a good bit, doesn't he? Yeah. I think so, yeah. 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 Like Greece and on the this, Little Missouri River. This part of the country has been putting out some giant fish. We've seen a 914 and a 1014 this week. We also have seen an 11 and a 12 pounder at DeGray, which is right down the street. As we see Jeremiah Kendi hooked up already. Had a schedule. That did not take long. Mm. Wow. Oh, no. <laughs> huh? Let's go. Look at it. Let's go. Oh, my God. <sighs> I guess I did want that trap after I dropped my rod. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, Lord. Mm-mm-mm. I didn't want to jinx myself, so I didn't even clear my scales yesterday. What you'll see from Jeremiah today is being able to change up areas that he's been fishing the rest of the tournament with the wind blowing out of the north. If they had a south wind or no wind at all, he's going to really rotate through places that the wind's pushing in, especially early this morning, because a lot of people don't know this, but Lake Washita, this bite picks up after 10 o'clock. It's been that way my entire life, and I think you'll see him with this shot early. He's gonna do well. 335 ain't bad to start the day. There you go. Got to consider that's a bonus fish. And, mm. As uh, Jeremiah did not have anything in the live well at noon yesterday. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. Wow, what a, not good news for the rest of the field, but 
plenty of time and plenty of opportunities for the rest of our anglers to catch up. Again, we have 10 anglers out there today. Very important day, championship day. First time at Lake Washita for the Bass Masters in a long, long time. And what a start to championship Saturday. Today on FS1, the future stars are back with roaring engines and grueling nonstop action. See who claims the first checkered flag of the season today at 5 Eastern on FS1. Some Xfinity Series racing on the way today. Biggest, uh, some would say the biggest weekend for racing of the year going on down in Daytona. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to what may transpire today. There Big you. things happening already. Our tournament leader, Jeremiah Kendi, this was moments ago. Oh, 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 no. Maybe a little bit of a forgotten <laughs> bait. We forgot the spinnerbait a few years ago. The Look lipless has been forgotten, but with that submerged vegetation, that could be the ticket today for him. It's been the ticket for him this week so far. Jeremiah Kendi stretching his lead out just a little bit. Number second place, Matt Baker. Well, the plan this morning is to early hit as many of these good rocky points shallow as I can. I, you know, a lot of times on this lake, well, most of the time, I think they feed at night. So a lot of them will get really shallow early. And then, I mean, if it, the wind stays up all day, they'll stay up there all day. But if it slacks off this afternoon, I'll have to fish my bait a little deeper probably. But that's what I'm trying to do this morning, take advantage of the early bite. And I took advantage of it a while ago, I caught a three-something. Decent start. <laughs> I'll take that after I kicked my rod in the lake as soon as I got to my first stop. But that made up for it. You notice he didn't go very far I either. He's right there by takeoff. To the next 10 cast, I think. Stetson, you said you, you know that cast. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, yeah, that, right. that area he's fishing there, when you have a north wind blowing in there this time of year, it's it's a very, very productive area. We looked at the color of that lipless. Well, tell us about the main forage the there. The point, it's got rock all over well, it. I, I feel like crawfish for That's one, but I feel on. like a lot really of these fish are feeding on bluegill. Oh. You'll see them on your, on your graph up there, uh, real shallow this time of year and swimming in the top of the grass, but definitely crawfish, bluegill. Uh, they're, and they're fish feeding on shad out deeper also, but the crawfish right now are, are what he's keying on this morning up on those rocky points, no question. He's had a week of first. I was down at the docks. He was the first guy to check in on day one. Of course, he had 19 pounds, seven ounces, and then he leads after day two of first, first fish today. He just hopes it holds out for the rest of the day. He Look. fouled my trap up. Dad gummy knocked slack in it. I can tell you right now, if if, if this holds up and this works, those boys have a long day ahead of him because he knows enough places to do this all day. And nobody has more confidence on Lake Washita than this guy right here. Jeremiah is not competing in the uh, elite qualifying competition here, but uh, if he wins, should he win, it's a long ways away, I, uh, qualifies for the classic. If to qualify for the classic, he'll have to fish the other two you know, in his division. Yes, yeah, Logan Martin but in I'm not fishing May and in June at UFAL Oklahoma. I don't want that kind of world. What he just said right there, That's he told me, I, he's not trying to make the I'm elites. Afraid. He does. He has no desire to fish for a living again. He, he's been down that road, as he says. And, uh, Hats off to the guys that are doing it, because that is a dead gun battle. And he knows all about it. He knows what we go through day in, day out, and uh, he just wants to win this tournament. And uh, you hear it all the time, but it's really start. true. These guys can catch them. It was just amazed me the first day of this tournament what they caught, and the places they found in practice. <laughs> I just couldn't believe it. It took my whole life to find, and they spent a couple of days and find it all.
but I've yet to see anybody fishing exactly the way we're fishing these little bitty isolated rock deals and little grass clumps. You'll notice that's all because of you'll notice the other three guys here deep. on the four box are, are all looking down that's at their graph and he is the one guy that's not doing that. And that forward sonar, we've all talked about it, but this place right here is one of those where even for myself, it'd be tough to not be doing that because there's so many fish out there swimming on bait and in the timber and on the edges of the grass. And, and Jeremiah's good at that also, but he also knows what the capabilities are of just focusing on getting that bait up there on those little rock points and making the exact cast that he needs to make. Lake Washita is about angles when you're fishing up there shallow, the grass edges on those little points. He's not just throwing that bait up there and winding it back. He's working those points and that grass at specific angles to get his bait right in the strike zone. And those guys have done it for so long that they do it by feel. You know, a lot of these younger guys, myself included, we like to look at our graph screen and see what those what that screen's telling us, where the edges are and things like that. But a lot of those guys are casting that bait up there. They're reeling it down the edges and feeling it, you know, making multiple casts to get the bait right in the 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 strike zone. And praying that someone doesn't cut down their favorite tree that they've used for years to triangulate it. Or if I line up right here on the buoy and I look at that tree, that's the that's the edge of the grass. But grass does grow differently every year, depending on freezes. So at Washita, have you been there early this year to see what the grass has been like? I know there's the areas to the west in the clearer areas, there there was more grass at times. Sure. But up the lake as well there's some grass. Yeah, there's a lot more grass this year than, than I can remember, but it's not created equally. Uh, I can tell you right now that there's areas that are, are more productive than others. And for me, uh, he, he's right in the, in the correct area and, and he knows exactly where to be and when to be there. So if, if those fish are, are doing what they should do, uh, he'll get some more bites. But I'm anxious to see how these other guys that are that are not too far behind weight wise can can make adjustments from what they've been doing on this particular lake because I myself know how tough it can be to change up to go do what you need to do to, to get that win not just to be competitive but to, to break into that top spot chasing two locals that know the lake so well. I'm curious to see if, if we can have somebody from that you know middle of the pack come up and, and make some good decisions and catch a big fish. Well, Jeremiah Kendi, as you say, has got, he's definitely got a plan in mind. He's got something mapped out. Of course, the X factor is the possibility of a giant. Evan Kung, nine pounds plus on day number mm -hmm. one. That can sort of scramble things up a little bit. Sometimes they eat it, sometimes they don't. Just about putting it in front of as many fish as you can in a day. Hopefully a couple of the bigger ones bite. It was the talk of the tournament on day one with that 914 Stetson. He actually had it wrapped around the timber and had to go over it and work it, work it out and work it up and got it in. Wow. You'll see right there, he's sitting in 70 feet of water basically, but a lot of those fish, it, and, and forward sonar has really changed my perspective on those deep fish. That Those fish can be in 70 feet and be in, swim right up to five feet that fast. And it's amazing to see how there's no, there, there's no longer a, you're fishing too deep. That doesn't exist anymore because those fish will get out there and move in and out really quickly. And uh, there, there's no water, in my opinion, that, that's uh, not productive anymore. Being able to see exactly what's going on down there really helps and uh, makes you more efficient for sure. Heard other anglers stats and talk about how they can see the fish react to their bait and they know it's going to bite or not. Do you find that the case? Yeah, especially this time of year, uh, 
you can kind of once once you get the bait down there to those fish, you'll see how once they. I think what you're seeing when you say react to it is you're seeing when they actually see that the bait's coming down. When they first realize that, hey, there's something that looks like a shad falling on my head, that's what you see is the initial uh, time when they realize what's going on. And then, yes, there'll be times where those fish will immediately what I call is they turn up for it. They immediately, they're swimming along here and all of a sudden they turn straight straight up towards the sun and swim straight to your bait. And I'm sure that's what a lot of guys are seeing and I'm sure we'll get to see that some today. Evan Kung here from Pickering, Ontario. He's 24 years old. He had a great term, Okeechobee, 17th place. And had a 14th at the Open at St. Lawrence last year. So this, he, he knows how to Make moves in tournaments, that's he, for sure. He said that he uh, has fished around Cooper Gallant and the Johnston brothers in that portion. Because you could be from Canada and you could be uh, uh, 30 hours away. Right. So he is in the area where he's fished against those guys. And he said he, uh, you know, he, he really wasn't expecting a bunch last year fishing. And that's probably to his detriment this year. He had more in, intense goals of, of achieving in the first two events. He's obviously done very well for Evan Kong. But I will say, and we've talked about the forward sonar is very popular. It's helpful, especially fishing over 70 feet of water, things that we wouldn't have done before or would have taken a lot more time to do. He, he hit on a piece of standing timber his transducer on day one and had to come in early. He was a late flight and he came in. He was one of the first people in. Uh, so that's another deal is if your pattern is solely dependent on that, you know how to read 2D. So some people will have to adjust if, they just, if something happens or you got to hope you fix it quick. Yeah, but the, the problem is, is even for myself, when I, when I was 10, 11, 12, the first three or four boats that I had, of course, it just had 2D sonar on the front. And I've caught a, a million bass off 2D sonar, but uh, the forward sonar makes it easier. And uh, without that, it can be a struggle, even for myself. Well, let's take a look at our unofficial leaderboard by a bass track. Jeremiah Kennedy started the day with a pound uh, two ounce lead, and now he has stretched that out to a four pound and a half lead. Over second place, Matt Baker, two Arkansans still at the top of our leaderboard. Andrew Hargrove, Logan Johnson, and Christian Ostrander rounding out our top five, and we are just getting started on Lake Washita. We'll be right back. Hey there anglers, I'm Fox Weathers Craig Herrera and here's today's Bassmaster Open final forecast looking at weather out on Lake Washita in Hard Springs, Arkansas. Boy, look at that mix of sun and clouds, temperatures right into the mid 40s. Here's something to watch though, winds though at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. So be safe out there and have a good time. Be a little tricky casting. Lake temperatures in the mid to upper 40s. Remember, you can download the Fox Weather app or stream Fox Weather from your favorite connected TV device. Thank you so much, Craig Herrera and everyone at Fox Weather, keeping us surprised at what's going on here. A little bit different weather each and every day. Sunny, as you said, boating weather on day one. Oh, it Ryan was. Moore. It was like uh, just sunny and bright and one of those traditionally tough fishing days. And everybody expected the, the next day with the clouds and, and wind would be a lot, but it really didn't pan out to be a bonanza, did it, Stetson? No, I don't think so. I, I feel like, uh, I feel like the changing conditions are, are really what's making this tournament interesting and I, I don't know if you noticed that but on the on the shot where it shows where everybody's fishing you'll you'll notice that there's a, a big Not group of guys in the top 10 in that Two middle section of the lake mm -hmm. Paul Marks I noticed he's over there south on that what I call the east end the clearing he's the only guy down there Lake Lanier guy dad's one of the best of all time there Two and a quarter. Two and a quarter, and he's on the board with only the top ten being separated by four pounds to start the day. Tommy, a two and a quarter is a good start for an angler, and he got a good start to his open season. He's fished an open here or there, Lake Hartwell, when it's come around the Georgia, South Carolina region, but he decided to fish all nine this year. He's actually roommates and friends with Tucker Smith, and they both made top tens at Okeechobee, and he is here in the top ten once again. He's our points leader for the EQ points race. Absolutely. Great, great start to the year for Paul Marks. He was a factor each and every day. I mean, he was he was solid all the way through our Oka, Okeechobee event. Definitely great with his forward sonar, but 
We'll get to learn a little bit more about Paul Marks this year. You can see these anglers who go on a hot stretch and two events in a row, two top tens. We'll see who will go to Santee Cooper next and see if he can do it. It's, uh, it's just like a, one of the main creeks. And then this is just a ditch, but it's got two, two ditches coming into it, a big point in the middle. And it's just full of timber in here, giant, giant timber nearly comes up to the surface. Paul being from around the Lake Lanier area, that no area that he's fish fishing sets up today. exactly like Lake dry. Lanier in a lot of ways. And I'm sure he feels right at home right there. And, and you know, he's got that area all to himself from the top 10 here today, it looks like. And uh, he's one to watch, no question about it. There's a lot of big fish that live in that area. His first keeper went in at two and a quarter. It was a good start to his day. Red start. Updating our live yeah. leaderboard. I like keep track of every day I go fish. I keep track of all the all the big ones I catch. I've got them for the past like three years. I've been doing that. Trying to keep the water off my eyelid so it won't freeze too bad. There was two on live scope that time. They just rocket shipped at it. That's what he's talking about. He said they rocket ship towards his bait. That's that's what I call they they turn up for it. As soon as they see it, they just turn a, straight a vertical and just come straight to not it. Moving too fast. Seems like the ones that are moving really fast are stripes. Ones that are kind of not really sitting still, but barely moving through these trees. And it's it's kind of weird. The spotted bass. There's a lot in here too. They're up really high. The largemouth are down there, 25 to 40 feet. It's kind of kind of strange. You'd think they'd be the ones up up close to the surface, but it's the spotted bass. A lot of the water temps this week were ranging in the 48 degree mark as we started day one, got up as high as 53 to 55 in most areas. But you gotta remember that's probably the top four or five feet. You know, when you jump in the water off a dock, your feet are much colder than your, than your chest is. And so those fish aren't necessarily changed a whole bunch from uh, a warm day versus a cold day. It's the sustained and what it's been, and I guess also amount of daylight we have, amount of sun penetration will really get the fish the moving timber. more so. Yeah, Kendi was telling me that the fish, when they start staging here, they usually don't move back on a cold front or anything like that. They're kind of going to stay in that uh, position. Right, and I, and I think there's two two groups of fish. I think you have those deep fish on Washita, like and then you have those grass fish on Washita, and those grass fish, they live the in that 15 feet it. and shallower that most of the way. winter. That one disappeared. Probably chased a bait fish or something somewhere. Marks is 22. He's going to leave here as our EQ points leader. Not Stetson, live anymore. Of the nine guys last year who advanced from the EQs to cool. the elites, only two of them were lower than 40th after the mm -hmm. first event. And JT Tompkins was the 40th guy, and he, of course, had all those top tens at the end and jumped up to win it. But Kyle Patrick was 72nd, I believe, in the points after the first event, and he had some good tournaments to climb up and, and finally did it at the end. But you got to have a hot start. A lot of guys, I wrote a, wrote a note that uh, they weren't lower than 22nd. Right. Yeah, it, it's all about momentum and, and keeping a right mind. And if you start off, you know, the first couple of events with a low finish, it just gets in your head that you know, update. these guys are going to catch them. Um, it's cold. Um, it's windy. Um, I ain't got a bite yet, but it's championship Saturday. Anything can happen, man. So, I don't know. I think, I think I'll be around some fish today. Uh, it's just getting them to bite. So, we'll see what happens. I don't know. Anything can happen today. But with that many tournaments left on the schedule, 
a lot of these guys, even if they do have a low finish, they have that opportunity to get in whatever their wheelhouse tournaments are and make a run back up to qualify just because you can have a, a low finish or two, I'm going to guess, still with, with that many events and still be able to fish your way back in. It makes it harder, but uh, it's, it's definitely doable. Yeah, well, Tyler Williams, he had an up so, and down uh, season. He'd have a top 10 a and then near 100th. And to my right, and there's some points, some points that go way out in the main lake. And uh, I've been catching most of my fish just on those points and stuff. Sometimes um, they'll be up on the, on the edge of the grass um, where it drops off. And then, um, but my better fish really have kind of been out off the points of, um, in like 25, 30 foot of water, pretty deep. So um, I don't know, maybe this cold will push some out so I can see them a little bit better. But we'll see what happens. I don't know. You're just picking up with us. We are at Lake Washington, state of Arkansas, and this is the. Uh this is a St. Croix, Croix Bassmaster Open Series right here, the main pathway uh, for this uh, anglers in this great and, and very tough, toughly competitive series to make it to the Bassmaster Elite Series, which is the top level, and that's where all of these guys are engaged, except for our top two anglers who are locals who are doing very well here. But, uh, you're watching, a, for the most part, guys trying to make it to the top, make it to the top level of fishing. It's a hard project. by Jeff Evan Kung. Great shot right there of how, how much timber there is where he's fishing and, and a lot of those guys it's the exact same way. It can be very difficult to navigate through all that and present your bait where it needs to be and this wind to me is definitely going to affect the guys that are solely relying on forward sonar and being able to pick those fish apart one at a time. I think it's going to really um, change the way that they're going to have to approach today. Of course, again, a lot of these guys have different things on their mind. We all want to win, but at the end of the day, a few of these guys, most of these guys, I guess, are, are trying to qualify. So in the back of their mind, they want to just catch as much as they can to maintain a good finish here and move on to the next one. And I, I, I know how that feels all too well. Sometimes it's not all about winning that trophy. And uh, so a lot of these guys will, will keep doing what they're doing to try to put together a good bag. And you never know when one of them will run into a 10 pounder, obviously. What are we looking at there, Stetson? There you, where you see the timber close to the boat on the left side of the screen, and then when he panned up, it looked like there was the, where the vegetation started. So it'll grow out a little bit deeper, but it is still maybe on the inside of the timber line. Yeah, he's fish, where he's fishing there, the banks are a lot steeper, so that grass is only gonna come out to, it's still 20 feet, but it's not that far off the bank. What I mean by that is the grass line is narrow. It's a yep. thin band of grass. Now it looks like based on our map, Evan will be protected from that north wind. Maybe he'll get some productive time until maybe the wind shifts or it lays down a little bit for the guys on the south end. But I obviously saw Jeremiah with the wind blowing in on his area. The first fish already this morning. Back to hard growth. Hargrove, two years removed from Tarleton State. That's where he fished in college oh. just two years ago. Oh, yeah. 
He ain't ready. Looks like a good fish here. Oh. Come here. Gotcha. Whoa, let's go, baby. That's a good one to start today. Shoo wee. There go. Might have taken about an hour. Yeah. But I'll wait an hour for a fish like that at Washita to start your final day when you start the day a pound and a half back. Hey, Andrew might fish a little harder. Think he thinks he's three pounds back starting the day. He might fish a little bit harder than he was earlier. <laughs> It's not all bad, right? <laughs> Is that how it works? <laughs> Andrew Hargrove moving into second place with that one right there. Yes, a good way to start his day ahead of Matt Baker. Now, Paul Marks, we saw him put one in the boat also. And Jeremiah Kendi, though, with a good one to start. Three and a, three and a quarter pounds to get things going today. So we have some action. We're expecting things to open up as the morning goes along here on Lake Washita. You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. All these fish here are really, really skittish, like very skittish. If you don't throw past them, um, if you throw right on top of them, they'll, they'll spook. If you get the boat too close, they'll spook. Uh, if you're just fishing too shallow and are too close to them, they'll spook. I'm fishing pretty deep. I'm fishing 20 to 30 foot of water. And uh, I think that's helped me a little bit just because it, they're further away. And then, like I said, making long casts, 90 to 100 feet, trying to keep the fish at 80, somewhere in there. So. At the Warehouse Doc Talk with Andrew Hargrove just moments ago, put his first keeper in the boat, the young man from Moody, Texas, down there between Waco and Austin. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Andrew's really come into his own lately. Like you said, he ended the year with a top, with two top tens in the opens last season. Ozarks at Harris Chain and then started the year strong at Okeechobee, a renewed confidence. And then a boom, a top 10 here at Washita. Not only is it top 10, within striking distance of a victory in a classic berth. I asked him what it would be like to fish his first classic in his home state of Texas now that we've announced it at Ray Roberts. And he said, I think we'd have a whole lot of supporters show up and that would be super cool to be able to do it in my home state. There go. Yeah, that was moments ago. Andrew Hargrove now in second place ahead of Matt Baker. Fifth place right now is this man from the Delta, California Delta, Turtle Rock, California, Christian Ostrander. There's one. I don't know how big he is. Right where he should have been, though. I'll run around for a minute. Get out of that tree, Harold. Not a bad one, I guess. Looks like he's throwing a shad colored crankbait, which is somewhat unusual for this time of year there. Right where she should have been. Not real sure if he's fishing Maybe grass he'll... or if he's fishing timber. There and they just saved a bunch of money to go all in on the <laughs> issues this year, traveling with uh, Loberg. Yeah, Andrew Loberg is a name that you'll want to know if you do not know him. Fished for Chico State a few years ago, moved to Alabama actually. So I asked Christian last night, I said, 
you're just hanging out over here. You driving your van back and forth to California. And he said, I'm hanging out with Andrew at his house in Alabama if he lets me, you know, every now and then. So uh, he, he said, said he's he might fly well back taken care of. here and there when he's got a couple weeks off. He's got a guide service out there, a couple guys working for him. So you can see right there, there's a, some grass on the bottom. Looks like he's on kind of the edge of a hump. Little fish right there, yeah. Yeah, what you can see there is the bottom. Uh, that's a fish that's cruising. Looks like it's swimming away from him, kind of towards that little dip there. Now he's going to start swimming up on the on the flat, but he looks like he's kind of on top of the, the flat a little bit, kind of throwing it's probably just a little depression there. You can see he's turning with the bottoms changing because he's turning the troll motor and where that fish first popped up was about 70 to 75 feet away from the boat. Definitely have an advantage to get those fish to bite the further away from the boat you can make that cast. A lot of anglers this week talked about where there was taller vegetation where it was Ooh. a little bit thicker. You could not see the fish. You would have to just bomb cast 70, 80, 100 feet out there and try to get it around the grass and you'd see them come up out of the grass and start to chase it. Then you have to do your cadence based on how they may want to react to it. But with this scarce grass off the bottom, they probably are a little bit more defined nearby. As you it. can see, I've been through here a few times. a good story on Zach Gutremont's uh, big 10 pound 14 ouncer that he was getting ready to leave, pull his troll motor up and then saw it a on lot his of graph, cast to the big fish and bit so right away. Stuff up high might look like a fish, it's just grass or stuff floating in the water. See his bait just dropped down to the bottom around the 65, 70 foot mark out on that where the clump is um, thicker? Yeah, most of it's just out here a little deeper, it gets a little thinner and you look back up towards the flat, that's all that's all grass right there. It's all hydrilla. Andrew Hargrove. Let's make a move over to the uh, one of the two Arkansans in our top ten left championship Saturday, Matt Baker, Glenwood, Arkansas. College angling here in Arkansas at uh, Arkansas Tech University, Russellville. Got him. All right. Stay out, baby. Maybe a keeper. Nothing special. Shed my gloves to do this. I talked to Matt last night for a few minutes, and uh, he said he's he's really trying to target those fish with a jerk bait, just to get them to react. He's very very good at that. Got a good keeper there to start the day. Our top three all now have a keeper in the boat and a decent decent sized one, at least a. Two and a half pounder, it seems, for all three of them at minimum as we head over to fourth place starting the day. Logan Johnson from the University of Alabama a couple years ago, one of our yeah, early 15. few years of college it's fishing. Big 14. on the EQs last year, 22nd place. Here, girl. Good effort. Come here, girl. Good start this year. Come here, girl. Come here, girl. Come back here. Come here, girl. Come here, girl. I know. I know. Come here. back right there, son. <sighs> I 
gotta warm you up. Good Lord, she smoked it too. She got that bait. Thank you, God, that's one. We call her, we're doing good, but I keep numbers <laughs> by tagging them. Uh. I stand corrected, Tommy. Our top four have all caught a two and a half pounder or bigger now that Logan Johnson there you go. has put that one in the boat. Logan Johnson. A little roll tide flavor to the action here <laughs> on Lake Washita this morning. I see things maybe picking up just a little bit. Of course, uh, Stetson, you told us that 10 o'clock is kind of the magic time on this time of year on Washita. Jeremiah Kendi still on top. Andrew Hargrove moving himself up into second place there. Christian Ostrander, our California angler, Matt Baker, started the day in second, and Logan Johnson moved up into the top five. Plenty more to come when we return. Bassmaster live from here in the Washita Mountains in the state of Arkansas. Oak Lawn for over 100 years, one of the top, top racing venues in the country. This is the St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Lake Washita, presented by seven reels. And also our live coverage, courtesy of Maxim Tires. Very happy to welcome them on board today. Making all this possible, we sure appreciate that. What a great place here. Great, great tourist destination since all the way back into the 19th century. Here in Visit Hot Springs is our fantastic host organization. We appreciate it a lot. How much have you dropped there at the track? <laughs> I, don't, I don't have enough to, to wager on the ponies. I only gamble out on the water, you know what I'm saying, when we put it up on the on the tournament entries, you know? One, one word of advice for you, bet big, win big. Hey, you can take that to the best. Right? The best hey, for, for lack of better terms, I feel like we're going to have a horse race today at Washita as well with how many nice good fish we've seen. You know, I you like, like that? that? Very good, very good. That's Lake Washita. First time for the Bassmasters here in over 20 years. The man in the lead has not fished a Bassmaster event, Jeremiah Kendi, in over 20 years. So he is, remains the man on top. Got a first look for today from the Missouri angler, Andy Newcomb. Think of the Ozarks area. Good finish. Open up there last year. Looks like he's way up the South Fork River. Keeper anyway, not much of one. But it we're is, on the board. The ball and chain. The I saw ridge. it on his deck yesterday when I asked him about it. <laughs> first Carolina rig fish all week. But I promise you, it's not the first one He's that's been much, caught on that lake. <laughs> that's one for the old school. <laughs> That's why I got excited and asked him yeah, about it. He said, you a big Carolina rig fan? I said, I'm a big, just different kind of fishing fan. So I, if you whip that out, you'll be the only one throwing the Carolina rig tomorrow. I promise you that probably. When he finally got it, he got it. My scale says negative 235 degrees. I don't think that's right. <laughs> it's close, but that's a little guy. Buck 58. That's one for the box, though. You say 150? Yeah, 150. Okay. And he top 20 at Okeechobee to start his year. Comes up here to Washita and makes it to the top 10. Man, we are, we got some emerging uh, bright stars out there. I got a really good feeling about Andy. You know, if you know, he had never fished with Bassmaster before until last year at Lake of the Ozarks. We came to his home lake, so we decided to jump in and fish it. But I had known his name just from paying attention to the world of fishing, local, regional stuff. You start to see names pop up, and with him being from Missouri, you see him fish Ozarks, Table Rock, Bull Shoal. You see him around, and he said that he really kind of got into tournament fishing in 2016. So it's been less than a decade he's been tournament fishing. 
finally jumped into the you know a, a BFL division, wins Angler of the Year his first year doing it. Jumps into you know a semi pro level, wins Angler of the Year his first year doing it. And so he said, you know what? I, better time now than never to try to make the Elite Series. And so three great finishes already in his three Bassmaster events. Impressive. Tell you if I lose one and I find out I got a dull hook. Not be happy with myself. You see, Jeremiah hasn't caught a fish in a while, and that that's typical for throwing a lipless bait. I mean, you you can you can definitely go hours without a bite. But he knows as well as I do that you don't really have to start worrying about it till till 10, 11 o'clock and then things you can do when you're fishing shallow. then things should Changing pick up for him. It don't take two minutes, now I'm back. Sometimes it takes you four or five hours to catch a fish. That old five pounder, what's that? Grinding them down all day. Yeah, no doubt. It's hard to penetrate them five pounder lips. There he is. That is our leader, Jeremiah Kendi, second Boom. fish. The cast the after he changed his hook. Yeah. <laughs> He's not a five pounder. One for one on that hook. hook. Just he could retire as the most right there, efficient see how hook. it went all the way through his lip? Uh-huh. Bam. He just needs to be about four pounds bigger. But beggars can't be cheesers right now. Man. I hope it's this hard to take every one of them off. little history with Jeremiah and myself goes a long ways back. I started fishing with Jeremiah in his boat when I was 10, 11, 12 years old. Learned a lot from that guy on that exact lake and for sure. all the other lakes around central Arkansas, but was able to travel with him as a co-angler back when I was 16 years old. So got a lot of history with Jeremiah. Watching Paul Marks there on the left side of your screen, seeing his unit as he's Couple hot ones coming up, hooked up there. That's what you want to see. Was it two or three? Yeah, it looks like competition, and then several. Keeper number two. Jerk bait. So he's made a little move. He was out, out deeper, obviously, in the timber and spinning rod. Now he's back up there. Finesse power fishing, what I call it. Got a good keeper in the box. Two two pounders now, two, two plus for Paul Marks. He'll move up into it. Probably into fourth place there. Jeremiah Kendi, though, we saw him put his second one in the boat. He's right on track. In fact, ahead of schedule compared to his uh, uh, output the first two days here, so uh, he's definitely the man to beat at this point. Andrew Hargrove, good morning for him. And Matt Baker, we're looking for him to get things going here before too much longer. Good, good anglers out there striving very hard on Championship Saturday. The biggest day in racing just got bigger as Grand Marshal Dwayne The Rock Johnson will kick off the Daytona 500. The great American race returns tomorrow at 2.30 Eastern, only on Fox. Race we've got going on here today on Bassmaster Live will conclude today. This is Championship Saturday for our Opens EQ, second event of the season here at Lake Washita. Of course, there are nine events throughout this season, and the top nine anglers points-wise throughout that season, you have to fish all the events, are going to make it. Their, their pathway to the elite 
Series is complete, the Elite Series being the top level of Bassmaster competitions. Very, very important day for these 10 anglers who are left from the original just under 200 who started at the start of this tournament. Of course, the winner will be awarded a spot in the World Championship, the Bass Pro Shops Bassmaster Classic for 2025, coming up to Lake Ray Roberts in Texas and Fantastic Fort Worth that just recently announced. Go to a man from Cumming, Georgia, Lake Lanier area. Having a great season so far. One of the early uh, horses out front for sure is Paul Marks. Just grass and then small little timber stalks. Uh, the grass is so thick it looks like the bottom right there, but it's like five foot of grass down there. See, he's kind of hanging out on the edges of the grass and just trying to keep his bait oh, on me. probably on top Yesterday of it. Yesterday I caught on the my edges. big one right over there. It was real random. First time I'd even fished the bank in this creek, in this ditch. So if you look at the left top corner of the screen, that's where the boat is. You'll see the, the zero up there between the two fives. The left five, that is the transducer facing reverse the Ford 5, 10, 15, that's, that's where his trolling motor's pointed. And uh, basically what you're seeing is from zero, you look straight down, that's under the boat. And you'll see as you go out further out to 80 feet, you kind of see how it slopes downhill. That's because he's looking from shallow to deep. So your picture is going to change depending on if you're shallow, deep, and which direction you're looking. If you're out deep looking in, it's gonna be sloped uphill. If you're up shallow or looking out, it's gonna slope downhill. So what you're seeing right there, he's sitting right on top of a lot of grass. It's really thick right there, and you can see those trees, the timber sticking up through the grass. It is hard also with sensitivity. You can change your settings, contrast, you know, turn the gain up, but when you're around timber and grass, there's got to be a happy medium because sometimes you blow it up. You can't see the individual spots sometimes because of how thick the grass is. So how do you how do you combat that? Well, I feel like you, you, there's two ways to fish it. Either you have to understand that you are only going to see a select few fish and hopefully you can get those fish to bite or you almost have to fish it like you're not looking for specific fish, which is what Jeremiah's doing, he's throwing that bait up there on the bank, super shallow. Don't get me wrong, I promise you, he's looking at that screen and, and seeing how those fish are reacting even up there shallow. But there's, there's two ways to fish it. And I'm going to say that the majority of these guys are trying to, to pinpoint specific fish holding on the edges. But the guys that are throwing moving baits, you know, a lot of those are, are waiting to see those fish come up out of the grass and see how they react to the bait and then change their cadence, you know, depending on how the fish are coming towards their bait. And a lot of them don't give you a chance. If, they, if it's a real hot fish, he'll come straight out of, the, out of the grass. And by the time you see what's going on, he's already got it. And I think we saw it on Evan Kung's shot. It was, it was just pointed at his console. You could see where the trolling motor was pointed on the top right of the screen. Some guys have that up there, some don't. But at that point, he was pointing out to the right side of the boat. Yeah. So Paul could be, it's wherever his trolling motor's turning or if he's got two transducers, whichever one it's reading from. But most of the time, these guys are trying to point forward where they're going. But at times when they pan to the left or right, that's why it drastically changes the bottom. And it's a learning process. I mean, the, when I'm out there doing what they're doing, I'm continuously going back and forward. And, and what makes it tough is you have to have your face so dialed into that, to that screen. So if you're, if you're panning right to left, right to left really quickly, you want to be able to uh, pinpoint those fish if you come across one. Looks like he sees one there. Yeah, you can see one. He pitched it about 25 feet out and the fish were yeah, see, there's a nice one on that tree at 30 feet. Those are tough to catch because you get so close. Uh, 30 feet is basically right on top of them in, in forward sonar terms. Doesn't mean it won't bite, but especially with as clear as that water is and the area he's fishing is the clearest water on the lake most of the time. So it can be a challenge to get some of those fish to, to react. Now another thing that whether you're looking at fish 
with forward-facing sonar. A lot of people, you know, have their thoughts and opinions on it. One thing it's done, it's made y'all more efficient around cover. I've been at Washita, Washita before, plenty, and lost thousands of dollars of baits on timber that I didn't know was there because it's just out of sight or it's 30 feet in front of the boat. Now you can be, if, even if you're not seeing fish, it's going to make you more efficient on the water of avoiding cover or being close to it without in it. Yeah, it definitely helps, you know, present your bait more efficiently, as you said, just not hanging up on the cover and, and just being able to, to go down the bank and, and not run over stuff. You know, a lot of times you, you tear your stuff up on your trolling motor, get stuck on a stump in your boat, and that area of the lake is completely full of trees and it just, it really helps, helps you maneuver through that structure. Arch remains in fifth place right now. Two keepers in the boat, two, two pounders. And change. And now here's one and two, Jeremiah Kendi and Christian Ostrander. both throwing moving baits and both not utilizing forward sonar as much as the other guys at this moment in time. I know Jeremiah, he, he knows how to do that well and, and if it gets tough on him, he will definitely move out and start doing that, but. You can see him peek at it. He'll peek oh, at yeah, it every yeah, now and then. It's not relying on it, but, but being aware of it, yeah. And a lot of that, what they're peeking at is more of that being efficient, just staying, keeping their boat in the right depth. Because to be honest, a lot of guys don't use 2D anymore. Like I turn mine, I still have it, but I turn it off if I'm really keying in on keeping my boat in a certain depth or keeping it in a certain distance. I use distance now more than depth. If there's grass under me, I wanna keep my boat, I wanna keep that grass at a certain distance from my boat underneath me. So it's just, it's just changed the way we fish, changed the way we look at uh, electronics and technology, but there's still something to be said for going down the bank at Lake Washita in late February and being able to throw a, a lipless bait or a crankbait and get those big bites up shallow and over that grass. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Tommy, we're looking at our top two guys, Jeremiah Kendi, just down the road in Benton, Arkansas, and then Christian Ostrander from California. Yeah. He's a Cal Delta guy. Right. His family is not a fishing family. He's kind of done it on his own. He got it all of last year, saving up his money to pursue the opens. His mentor and his team partner back home is Ish Monroe. He used to get his tackle from Ish at a also discounted rate at the yeah. end of the season. Yeah. So Ish had nothing but good things to say about Christian. As Matt Baker swings in another, maybe I think it's keeper number two. Yeah, it looks like a keeper. Close. One small one already, a pound and a quarter. That one's going to be very close to that size as well, I would think. Matt did say he, he has caught fish on a lot of different baits, so he's, uh, he's definitely trying to still put it together, figure it out. He's got time to do it. Andrew Hargrove, a little bit of success this morning, moved himself up into third from fourth place, I believe, to start his day. Says he feels confident in the multiple spots out there that he's scoped out through the course of this tournament. We're down to the third day championship Saturday. The winner here will gain access to the world championship in 2025 Bass Pro Shops Bassmaster Classic. Got more on the way. Go. Great to have you with us here on Bassmaster Live Championship Saturday at the second St. Croix Bassmaster okay. Open of this year of 2024. Lake Washita in Arkansas is where we are. Look at some of the scenes this morning. Ten anglers left in the action here today. All gunning for that top spot. Looking to get as many points as they can gather here. Two events into a nine event season here. So this is a, a critical day, especially for these anglers who have uh, worked well enough to make it out here today. Jeremiah Kendi, the local from up the road in Benton, Arkansas, still holding down that lead. He was the leader to start today. Christian Ostrander from out the California Delta. It's a man who was pulled up in second place behind him. Also, we've got uh, 
three, four anglers who got a great start down at Lake Okeechobee and are continuing on that path there just to building their points. Boy, this is the time to get it done. This is one of them right here from Georgia. Paul Marks. We've seen some guys fishing around islands today. Not, you're the way offshore, but they have some land, some good contour around them. I was looking online, there's 200 islands listed for Lake Washita. That's a God. ton of islands for a 40,000 acre lake. See that good one following it right there. Yep, got it. <laughs> mm. The chain pickerel. Yeah, Jack, we used to call him. It's the Arkansas state fish. <laughs> is it really? No. no. It's the Lake, Lake Maumel state today. fish. It is, it is the. Uh, <laughs> When the grass disappeared in Washita, those those really disappeared. You really, really? Didn't hardly ever catch really? one. These things are. They when I was a kid, you used to catch as many of those as you did like bass, which was kind of crazy. And it looks like it's coming back now. You're starting to catch. It's terrible. I guess a they just sit them. in the grass but, all day. But it's crazy that it's the grass that that brings them. Yeah. Or that they live in. You don't want to catch the real Arkansas state fish, an alligator gar. Ugh. Glad he didn't eat it head first. Well, I say the chain pickerel's a sign that you got some pretty good water quality. It's yeah, always been. For I, sure. I guess that's right. And I've always said when you're catching those, you're in the right area. You know, you're, you're where the forage is and they eat the same things. And it's a different deal. Yes, we're seeing maybe Domeki style baits at times or drop shots, things like that. But Stetson, with our schedule for the Elite Series, Toledo Bend, Lake Fork, you'll have two in Florida, then you'll have Murray, Wheeler, Smith, and two up north. Do you see this year maybe being a forward facing so sonar? It could be dominated, but more like power fishing, jerk baits, bigger baits, not just dropping on fish with spinning rod. Like you feel like there's a good mix that could happen with where we're going? Well, there's definitely going to be a good mix. But the, the the thing is, is is people talk about how how it's just spinning rods and this and that. But you th you've always thrown what you felt like you needed to throw, no matter where we went in the country, to get bites. And to me, a spinning rod and a, a minnow style bait, those things catch a lot of big fish. And so yeah, we're gonna see we're gonna see some diversity in the in the things that are the patterns that are used, the techniques that are used, but you're still going to see a lot of spinning gear this season on the trail for sure. Mm. Let's get back up in the south fork of the lake and Andy Newcomb. Lake Got of plenty, the Ozark, Scott. plenty of real estate. I didn't yeah. see another boat then. Yeah, you can wheel and deal out there today. Probably not a lot of pleasure boating going on this morning. No, either. I wouldn't <laughs> doubt it. You can see that water's got a lot more color to it. Doesn't look dirty, but it definitely has more color. Tom, we need to get on their diet plan, bud. Is he? Beat down Blake? Yeah. Good for him. We'll call it a pound and three quarters. Better one, better than his first one for Andy Newcomb. Right now, let's turn to Andy Newcomb for our Bass Pro Shops Top Lures. Hey guys, Andy Newcomb here. Uh, stop number two of the Bassmaster EQs on Lake Washita. Off to a pretty good start, hoping to squeeze into that top 10. 
Uh, my two key baits have been a half ounce evergreen jackhammer chatterbait uh, with a mini scrub trailer. I've been throwing the chatterbait at anything with wind, transition banks, uh, brush, just kind of everything, and then a wacky worm with a bait cave custom slim stick. Um, the wacky worm I'm picking off kind of isolated fish that I see in shallow brush piles. That's Pro Shop's top lures, Andy Newcomb. Uh, good, good start. 61st place in Okeechobee, right? Kind of upper middle of the pack. Yeah, and uh, when you look at his baits, he shows off a chatter bait for me yesterday and a wacky rig. He had a bunch of other baits on there. It's good to be a Washita when you can also throw a Carolina rig and throw a crankbait as well. So Andy's keeping a lot of things in play, which is cool to see yeah. a lot of variety. And day to day, we've had three different weather days. It's been sustained cold. Yesterday, it wasn't cold until the last check-in, so some guys didn't even fish in the cold yesterday. And then the first day, it was completely sunny, 70 degrees, and still. Mm -hmm. So. A lot of these guys have had to adjust, especially because it was rainy, windy, and cloudy all of practice. You're going to top out only in the mid-40s today, so it's a, a, yet another different day of weather. So we get back to Paul Marks and spend some time with him the last few minutes. We're about to hit a piece of timber. Maybe not. It's going to be close. It's 13. 13 and a quarter. All thinks that one's going to keep. Let's get back to Andrew Hargrove right now. Andrew's sort of moving up and down between third, fourth, and fifth during the course of this morning. Oh. Hmm. Tough break on that one. As a vegan. He's fishing in an area of the lake that I really, really like out there. There's a lot of better than average quality fish out there. The last last day I spent on that lake, uh, caught a partner of mine fishing a tournament. He caught a almost six pounder within, I'm gonna say it's within a couple hundred yards of where he's at right there. So there's a lot of big fish there to be caught. Your partner, is that would that be your son? Or is it a different partner? You got you have roaming partners? Well, I've got two partners right now, so <laughs> it, it's actually my son's partner's dad. Oh, okay. Ah. There he is. Shoot, let's go. Jeremiah Kendi, your leader, our top four within two pounds and change at this point right now. This is gonna, looks like this is gonna give him a, a move up, yeah. Pounds wise. Bam! Notice how a lot of these guys are moving around a lot and, and getting, I would, I would say protected, protected wind from the wind. But Jeremiah, he's looking for that wind. That's what he wants today. If he gets it, he's going to keep that in his hand all day. Jeremiah Kendi took over the lead yesterday. And he is hanging on to it today. In fact, he's extended it just a little bit. The rest of the field, not letting him go and get too much distance between them. We, we still got a good horse race going on right here. Andy Newcomb from Missouri now moved up into second place. We got more on the way from Lake Washita. Saturday, it's Bassmaster Live, and it is the St. Croix Bassmaster Open. At Lake Washita, presented by Seven Reels. Live coverage brought to you by Maxim Tires. Liking that today, new name on our, on our uh, rejoiner there for you. Love having them around and making this happen for us today. 
see them later this year for the St. John's River Elite. That's right. They're going to be the sponsor of the one down in Florida. This is our second tournament down in Florida. Very much looking forward to that as well. What a beautiful place, Lake Washita. Big attraction for boaters and anglers, especially for a long, long time. Got the action going on, and we have in our studio. So happy to have. I mean, the expert analysis by the man. We're fishing on his home lake, Stetson Blaylock, and his eighth year as a Bassmaster Elite Series winner. Look at those stats there. Got a big win over at Winya Bay. We all remember that very well. 19 top 20s. Going to fish your fifth classic, fifth five in a row. That's going some. That's not easy. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I've always looked at myself as just being able to, to fish consistent and just be steady. And uh, to me, that's what's gotten me to my fifth classic. And uh, I can't lie, though, I'm ready for a win. I may change things up this year and fish a little bit different, kind of kind of fish for uh, those bigger bites, try to, try to bring home another blue trophy. Tommy, he might bring home a different colored trophy, not a blue trophy, the classic trophy. It's at Grand Lake. He was one of our picks right. at the desk of when we were doing Absolutely. the classic preview because of the area. And you show up in these pre-spawn classics, in these March classics. Gunnersville, you did a Hartwell, you've done it. A couple top fives in the last few years. Yeah, and I have a top 10 at Oklahoma on Grand Lake also. So I know that lake pretty well. And uh, we're going at a great time, a time that I really enjoy fishing. and. Uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of staying low key about that one because because <laughs> I know Jason Christie's going to get a lot of love for that tournament, but uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it for sure. He's only one hundred and fifty thousand dollars or so it looked like from the Century Club. So another year of making all the checks for Stetson, maybe he mixes in a win. He could have that done by midseason for sure. I, I would not rule that out. I think that's a definite possibility. We sure are glad to have him in the studio today. The analysis has been great. Let us helping us figure out this Lake Washita, which is a fantastic fishing lake, but uh, it's not a free throw. It's, you, you gotta work at it. It is a challenge. There he is. A lot of guys will tell you Jeremiah Kendi is one of the best on Lake Washita, and he's showing you why right here. You know, starting out slow the last couple days, but when it comes down to crunch time, championship Saturday, he's he's putting fish in the boat. Another good quality keeper there, and uh, I think that's four. Yeah, four for Jeremiah. And to be honest, it isn't even time yet. And he knows that. He knows that what he's doing right now is just icing on the cake. And if the wind pick keep, you know, keeps blowing, uh, those other guys are going to have a tough time catching them. And, and you already see it happening right now. I mean, they're, they're going to have to start making some adjustments to, to be able to catch up to what Ooh. he's doing. A little, little juicier. And, and you see the flurries, like you said. Yes. He, he went for a long time after that first one, and now he's caught two two-plus pounders in the last 10 minutes. It could happen quick. He's almost to a limit. You see another catch here, a small one. Might be number one. This is Evan Kong. I think he's long enough. Another new development, you can speak to this, maybe yeah. Stetson, is smallmouth. They said oh, you yeah. can, we, in past oh. years, it seems like you weren't allowed to weigh in a small You could catch one, but you Somewhere. couldn't weigh one in. We could weigh in two per person this week. And so smallmouth are pretty new to Washita, Wash but with the conditions, environment, and depth of water, it should be a place that they could thrive. Yeah, they're coming back strong. I've caught a couple nice ones down towards the dam this, this winter. And, uh, you know, I don't know if it'll ever be a smallmouth fishery, but I definitely think that they will start playing some in tournaments in the near future for sure. One thing you see here that it's so important to point out is Jeremiah is the only person that's really utilizing a lipless crankbait the way that everybody around Arkansas knows that it can be used and be effective here on Washita, and that's very surprising to me. I, I figured there'd be other guys figure that out. You know, even, even the guys that are from Texas, places like that, that are used to fisheries that have the grass like this and the rocks and timber mix. They're, they're just not yep. fishing that way, which Wind is, is your friend. kind of surprising to me. I think you just heard Jeremiah say, the wind is your friend there. And I, I mean, he's one of the ones that taught me that. 
from a very young age, and I'm talking about 10 years old. I was yeah. spending time in the boat with him, 10, 11, 12 years old, and uh, yeah, I may have plucked all the fruit here. <laughs> Well, for everyone that doesn't understand, explain the mechanics of that, why that helps his, what he's doing. Well, the water's clear, and there's those fish are, I can't see what he's throwing at right there, but I, I guarantee you it's a little ditch. There's a little cut right there in the, in the island in the bank, and he's throwing that bait as far as he can up in that little cut in that ditch, and the wind blows in there on those banks it positions the bait. I think it, I think it moves the crawfish around even, oh, even though okay. they're on the bottom. But it just positions those fish inside edge of that grass and inside those little cuts and dish it, ditches, and it allows them a really good ambush ambush point for the lipless crankbait. And to me, it's just one of the best ways to catch a big stringer there. The last fish he caught gave him nine and a half on the day and a more than a six pound lead, Jeremiah Kendi. You've also got to keep in mind, too, these guys that are that are running the forward-facing sonar game and fishing deeper now, and those things, it's a lot harder box. to catch these fish when the wind's blowing. They're on the screen. Uh, we come out here, we fish the bank through a jerk bait, caught a couple really, really small ones, a couple trash fish. Now I came back out here where we've done most of our damage in this tournament with keepers. So, depth, uh, not really a bottom depth I'm looking for. I'm just looking for fish out here that are swimming around eating bait. They're anywhere from 10 feet down to 60 foot down. And it's so hard to hit them. They're swimming around, there's timber everywhere. Um, really using my electronics. I got the clearest ones you can get. Uh, Trent at Sonar Pros rigs my boat and it's, you can't get no better than this. Around all this timber, I'm using Seaguar uh, Tatsu, 10 pound. You seen, I just kind of horse that striper in. No issues with it, I mean, it's strong stuff. But these, it seems like the largemouth are 30 plus feet down. It's really weird, the spotted bass are up high. Stripers, they're everywhere. Oh, all depths. He just did a great job well, explaining there. You'll see he's, he's in, in 60 feet, feet plus, plus of water, but he's actually catching those fish anywhere from five feet under the surface down to 40, 50, 60 feet deep. And he's just looking for specific fish to spin it out in that timber. You can see all the trees on his screen. And uh, those fish will just hang around that cover, but they're also, a lot of them are just free swimming out there in the middle looking for bait, looking for something to ambush. Cold this morning, line's freezing to the reel. It's kind of hard to hit some of the fish. Can't cast far enough with it frozen. Eyes are froze, holding the line in there. I mean, when you see 60 feet of water, 52 feet of water, and the trees come up, they're within five to 10 feet of the surface based yeah. on, I can't see his, you know, the, line being strong, the depth on the side of the graph, but that's basically what the they come up to. One of these tall trees, you got to throw at it. And I've had several hit the tree, reeling them in, and haven't broke line yet here. Like our pictures of the anglers, our pictures from, from the, the front-facing sonar depend upon cell service. And yeah. We have a little bit of, we don't have all the resolution that, that probably that Paul is seeing. Right yes, now. so yeah. when he says it's clear, I mean the fact that we can see what we've seen with the grass and the timber, and then you can see it that defined in that deep of water, you know it's clear on his end, but yes, getting it through. If you've ever been to Lake Washita, I mean, there ain't a house the on the lake. No, yeah, you, 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 you leave, no you know, you better get gas before you get there. So yeah. many trees, the whole lake's nearly like this. Some places are taller than others, but this place, they nearly, you can see them whenever you go right over them. I wouldn't want to run in here, be kind of dangerous. And I'm guessing that he picked this style of fishing based off of Lake Lanier, big spotted bass, timber, timber. timber. There's, there's one thing that, nice that separates the two lakes. Washita doesn't have a big concentration of three to six pound spotted bass like Lanier does. And I understand why he's doing what he's doing, but I also know Washita very well. And it, unless he starts catching some of those better quality largemouth that are in there, which obviously he has to get to this point, uh, in the top 10, 
but it's going to be tough for him if he doesn't get some of those better largemouth to, to cooperate. It's been a while since we checked in the man that caught an almost 11 pounder yesterday. <laughs> that Gutramon. Each angler has 20 islands. If we wanted to divvy them up, everybody can have 20 islands to yourself and Zach's over near hey, one of them. Stay off my island. <laughs> There's number one. I think so, I'll double check him, but. Looks like a spotted bass. And again, you'll notice these, a lot of these guys are catching mostly spotted bass out here this morning. You, you've seen a couple nice large mouth, but they're gonna have to make some adjustments. It's a different day, the weather's totally different. It can be a challenge. You'd rather not have the, the washed off spotted bass in your in your live well right. at the end of the day. Absolutely. Okay. You should, <laughs> we'll talk there about was that. a reason that Zach had a 1014 on one side and he had his three spotted bass he weighed in yesterday on the other <laughs> live well. <laughs> Jeremiah Kendi extending that lead right now, almost, uh, well, six and a half pounds. Anyway, we'll see how it works out. More to come from Washita. Today on FS1, the future stars are back with roaring engines, grueling nonstop action. See who claims the first checkered flag of the season today at 5 Eastern on FS1. NASCAR Infinity Series racing coming your way today. Big day for sports here in the, in the last half of winter here. So it feels like winter probably to these anglers out there on Lake Washington today. It was about <laughs> below freezing when they got started. Wind whipping around about 8 to 10 miles an hour. And you got a little sunshine now. Things are not quite as... Uh, chilly as it was to begin with. We have 10 anglers left on this day from the original almost 200 boats. These opens tournaments are packed with talent and lots of it. And they will fill up a lake. But these guys are getting to pretty much fish where they want to today. Strander, Schroeder, and Kung here. The leader, Jeremiah Kendi, is uh, currently in the middle of a move right now. He's, uh, as Stetson Bladelock explained to us, he has got a definite, probably map inside of his head with certain touch points for today, for sure. And I know it's like that on any lake you go to, that there's always a handful of locals that have a lot of knowledge. And there, there was definitely more than just Jeremiah and Matt Baker in this event that know the lake very well. Uh, just worked out for Jeremiah this week that things played into his favor, but uh, I know if I was in this tournament and in this top 10, I would be scared of that guy. He knows a lot about the lake and, and Matt does too, but Jeremiah just has years and years of experience in these exact situations, knowing what to do to still put a good bag on the scales. And like Scott Martin at Okeechobee. Absolutely, <laughs> yep, absolutely. Yeah. Last year, Stetson, was the first year in a long time we have not had an Elite Series angler win an Open. Wow, didn't realize that. And I think that that was gonna be more of a trend, in my opinion, because you're now making so many more people for the Elite Series dream fishing all nine. The odds are most people are going to be in it for, for nine classic spots for the Elite Series berths. And so the competition at each event's gonna be sustained and not go up and down, you know, per yeah, event. Yeah. Those three right there. And that's the only reason why Martin said he entered Okeechobee. Backyard, I got a chance to win, make the classic. I mean, is that kind of would that uh, make your choice if you had something so good looking? I mean, yeah, it, to me, it's it's obviously Washita is my home lake. And, and again, I, I feel like I could have could have had a chance to compete there. But, um, 
Yeah, I feel like if you if you know a lake like Scott knows Okeechobee, why not get in that tournament and, and take a shot? And obviously he's had success there. It's not just his home lake. He's actually proven he can be very, very dominant there. And he did it again. This is Logan Johnson from Jasper, Alabama. Home of Smith Lake. Smith Lake in the rotation for the Elite Series this year. And I mentioned to you guys, yeah, Logan Johnson, uh, former Alabama Crimson Tide college fisherman. Yeah. Back in the early days of it, I guess he would have graduated or finished like a, the year I was starting. So he's just a few years older than, you know, early 30s. And he said uh, he guides now, and so he'll he'll have young kids with him. And he, he doesn't guide like a traditional guide. It's more of an instructional, teaching okay. younger anglers, you know, the next steps. I can go down on it. And he said these young anglers will talk and brag. You know, I love Jordan Lee. I love the, you know this angler, that angler. And he's like, I fished against Jordan Lee and did pretty good. And he's like, No way, you're so much older. And he's like, I'm not older than Jordan. We're the same age. And so he had to convince people. I promise, like I, I had a I had a good high school, college resume. Well, within a week's time, as a matter of fact, next Thursday, the Bassmaster Elite Series will kick off with the Gamakatsu. Bassmaster Elite on legendary Toledo Bend Reservoir in Manny, Louisiana. Be live on Bassmaster.com. And of course, next Saturday, a week from today, we'll have it for you right here on FS1. Stetson, I know you're all into the, you're about to head there that way today. You gotta start practicing tomorrow. What are we gonna find at Toledo Bend? You're gonna see a lot of everything, but, uh... March is coming quick on us, and, and Texas and Louisiana down there, those fish are getting ready to, uh, to move up. We should see a, a big weight event, and uh, I think you'll see a great turnout. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's time to get the season started. Lakes go up and down, trend up and down. I think we're, according to most folks who, who know, uh, this place is in an upward trend. Let's take a look at the Bassmaster Open last year yeah. at Toledo Ben running. Appreciate our guy Ben Milliken, rookie on the Elite Series this year, sending us this footage from his amazing week there. 75 plus pounds for three days of fishing. This was mid-April or early April, I believe. He was on pace for the Century Club if this was a four-day event. He wins it, goes to the Classic. He'll be at Grand Lake, and he's starting his Elite Series career next week on a place that he had a lot of success on. So be interesting, but uh, man, we'll see some big ones for sure. The Century Club is an expectation now. It's interesting, Stetson, how these lakes go in cycles. You know, like I, sure. I don't know if you see it around Arkansas with certain lakes up and the lake nearby is down. Toledo for the longest time was the number one lake in, the, in America. And then it went on a little bit of a downturn. Sam Rayburn came to big, big expectations. And now it's flip-flopped yeah, and Toledo it's, is back. It's coming back strong. Sure. Grass, overgrowth, that should all be in the water. The man of the hour is still this man right here. Benton, Arkansas's Jeremiah Kendi started the day with the lead. <laughs> oh, no. Terrific start for huh? Jeremiah, who did not Good yesterday man. have a fish at noon. He's certainly got some fish in the live well now. He is having a big, big day out there. That's bad news for the rest of these hopefuls. <laughs> yeah, or other is. nine. That's literally the hook I just changed. And Jeremiah, yeah, he's no stranger to multi-day events. He actually fished on a pro circuit for several years and had some success out there. So, you know, he's not just one of these locals that just knows this lake well. Jeremiah knows how to make the big decisions at the biggest moments in the game. And uh, he's proven right here that he knows what to do and when to do it. And uh, he's, he's stretching that lead out. And he's had multiple, multiple wins on the FLW related circuits. For sure in the past, yeah. Day one co-angler was the wife of his team partner, Ooh. Kevin Brown, who's fishing this as well. She called, she called uh, Jeremiah the goat of a Wachita. Wow. <laughs> Absolutely. And I wouldn't argue that point at all. A couple other guys, like Matt Baker, obviously, in Arkansas, Quincy Houchin was 10th mm -hmm. after day one. He fell off a little bit. He weighed in a small mouth yesterday. It looked like oh, it did the way in. Yeah. Okay. 
They said it's a different ball game fishing your home lake in February without an Alabama rig because that's what they're so accustomed to at home. Yep. It changes the way you may fish it or you got to employ some other baits and uh, adjust to it a little bit. And no nets. Got to have no nets. I was just about to say I'm surprised that Baker struggling a little bit this morning and not kind of changing up a little quicker. I know it's hard to do, but looks like he made the, the switch and uh, right there. I'll a, take a wet hand. A really nice keeper to get him going. Looks like he's throwing a uh, he Booyah there. one knocker. Yep, that's what he's throwing right there. And uh, we one know that bait is Definitely, definitely a good bait here on Washita. I think we have a funny clip of Stetson giggling with a six, five or six pound Gunnersville bass on that same exact bait a few classics ago, ah. just a, a few weeks from now. Yep. I remember that. That's right. I remember that very well. A fun moment and a fun classic there in the state of Alabama. We got things going on in Arkansas today, though. Out there on Lake Washita, some Arkansas performers doing very well today. This is the St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Lake Washita, presented by Seven. Big, big day here. There's our fantastic host city, Maxim, making our live, Maxim Tires, making our live broadcast possible there. Legendary. Resort City of Hot Springs, Arkansas, going back into the 19th century. The thermal springs here have attracted people from all over the country and all over the world for such a long time. And of course, uh, the big attractions, water, still a big attraction here, especially in the form of the lakes, like Lake Washita. Also got Lake Hamilton right here in town, and Lake Catherine down below that. The fantastic boating and fishing opportunities. And it's a beautiful spot tucked into the Washita Mountains, one of the oldest mountain ranges in the country older than the Rockies. Just took a view up Bathhouse Row there. Yeah, Bathhouse Row with the springs. And let's check in with Blake Schroeder from Texas. Blake from White House, Texas there. Close to Tyler and Lufkin. Not as big as I thought it was, but better one. Two and a half, two pounder, two and a quarter. Starting to see some guys make some moves running around the lake a little more, trying to kind of make those adjustments that are necessary to get the win here on Championship Saturday. I don't know if y'all got to see the chance, but this is a new 2024 Skeeter. One of the new things come with it is these new live well pads. You know, if you're, you know, you cut foam noodles, keep your fish from bumping up on top of the lava or anything, Skeeter came out with these foam pads, man, they're the real deal. I highly recommend you getting your hands on some. Blake Schroeder, we're gonna head back over, I believe, in the direction of, uh, well, yeah, it looks like Andy Newcomb, angler from Missouri. I misspoke about Andy earlier. I said he had a 61st. He had a 19th. You don't have to go at back on it. I can go back. I want to get it straight. I, I got it mixed up. To tell you, you know, he's having a great <laughs> year. <laughs> That's the one X factor with the Look, Andy Newcomb is the the rivers. We were wondering how many would go up the rivers. The fact that he's in the South Fork, a little dirtier water, a little water to himself, shallower fishing. That's why he's got four or five different baits on the on the bet on the boat deck that have worked this week. Andy with uh, six pounds plus as it stands right now, and in third place, let's hear what he has to say about his day. Uh, we got three in the box. We got one halfway decent one, almost a three pounder. Um, pretty slow, but I kind of expected that. I'm, I've got ice in my guides the whole time, uh, and I've been fishing 
so deep you can't hardly, or so shallow you can't hardly get the ice off your guides because your rod doesn't go all the way to the, <laughs> that far into the water. So um, it's slow as I expected, but uh, we're getting. But we're on the board. Well, let's give some of the action for mm. Mr. Newcomb earlier today. In the Lake of the Ozarks area had a great finish last year in an open from, up there. From where Denny Brower, Camdenton, Missouri. That's right. I think we've seen him on Bass Live two days now. Final day at Ozarks and today, mm -hmm. and I've seen him throw nine different lures because he was throwing a swim jig and a top water there and, and the Ozarks. He also went up the river um, where a lot of the guys, you know, went towards the dam or stayed on the main drag. That's off to him, you know. That, we, we like guys with a lot of tools in their arsenal. Our leader, Jeremiah Kenny's 45, Newcomb's 35, Logan Johnson's 34, and everybody else is in their 20s. Average age under 30 then, right? Would you say, Suge? Yeah. Yeah, with all the 20, 24 year olds, 22 year olds. That's phenomenal. It's very good to see that because you, you kind of, you know, with, with, seems like there's a lot of negative spotlight on our industry, but that just goes to show you right there that there are a lot of young anglers that still love the tournament fishing aspect of it. What I grew up loving, being able to go out there and compete for every bite that I could get, learn new techniques, learn new styles, and be competitive at a high level, it's really good to see those young kids coming up and dominating. I don't know if you saw this last year, we, we had you know the youngest elite qualifier in Trey McKinney did an article on the age of our nine guys who made it from the EQs to the elites. It's 24.8 years old was the average age. It's almost six years younger than the previous year. Yeah, that's. That's impressive, and that just goes to show you that commitment and hard work, no matter what your age, can get you a long ways. And uh, these kids are, that are coming up, you know, Trey, Tucker, those boys are, are very, very good anglers. He said Father Gill, 21 I mean, year yeah, old. There's a, and there's a lot more that, that I don't know personally, but making some strides for sure. For instance, somebody. Looks like he's got one. All right, maybe it was grass he was getting free from. Joey Nania, 34 years old, but he's fishing his 14th year of the Opens because he started when he was 19. He's made a couple classics. He'll be in this year's classic, and he's able to make a living fishing in the Opens and and guiding at Logan Martin. But he is a part of our like when he was 14 in the state of Washington, winning like the Junior Series stuff, like a young young age. And so you see guys and you're like, Joey's been around forever. He has to be in his 40s. No, he's 34 because <laughs> the youth opportunities get these guys involved and in front of our cameras and, and media team much earlier than they would have before. Like Trevor McKinney, the McKendry College Classic yeah. Bracket winner from a few years ago. He's been so close to making the Elite Series. He is, I've known him for a decade now. I, I met him when he was 15 in the high school series when he didn't want to talk on the microphone. And I did a sit down interview with him this week and he was like a natural. And so you just see these people progress over a decade. We've known Tucker Smith for six or seven years, and he just graduated um, from college. Yeah, you'd think he'd been out there <laughs> yeah. for, for 15 years, the, as much as he's accomplished. Oh, and even at the classic section, you're going to have to worry about the youngest ever qualifier. and. Aaron Yavorsky. Yes, yeah, 17, he'll be 18 one week, week before yeah. the classic. That is, that is wild. I just remember back to when I was 17, 18 years old and the decisions that I made <laughs> on the water were, were nowhere near where I am now, just knowing what to do and when to do it. And a, and a kid coming along that young and making those decisions that pay off just goes to show you that uh, he's committed for sure. I feel like we're in that mid-morning funk, even though it's still just early. It's 9 a.m. local time. But we've been seeing Bass Track pop off with catches, it's seemingly guys back to back to back. This has been a little bit of a lull. And like you said, what did you say, after 10 o'clock? Yep. 
a lot of the moving baits or the lipless bite will pick back up. And so we'll, it'll be interesting to see the time of day, especially with Jeremiah starting our show saying, with the wind last night, a lot of these fish feed at night. If we had a, you know, a bright moon or something like that, then these fish were active right at takeoff and may take a break before that midday portion. To me, it's it's 8.45 to 10, 10.30 is, is when you kind of see that lull on Washita most days. Heard that a lot this week of guys saying they had a, Kindy especially had a limited 8.47 on day one and went a couple hours, moved and called out almost everything. And we've had a we've had a severe front too. I mean, it wasn't storms and rain severe, but a cold front that pushed through from, I mean, 70 degrees down to, you know, below freezing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those guys are still getting ice in their guides at this point of the morning. So, things those fish can change a lot on that lake, even if it stays the same. But when you have these major fronts like this push through, it definitely can slow them down. I have to, I, since you corrected yourself, Tommy, I have to correct myself. Joey okay. Denny is not an old man. He's not 34. He's 32, but he's still been doing it for 14 years. So he started when he was 18 years old. So. <laughs> yeah, you owed him, you owed him a couple of years. Yeah. yeah, I think, I think he's in our top, top 20 or top 25 in the Open's EQ oh, points race. So we'll keep an eye on him as well. This is the second stop for that. The opens, but uh, we've got a new, uh, we've got one series about to start uh, here in March 20th, 21st, the next event, Lake Tin Killer in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, for the Yamaha Bassmaster Kayak Series. The Yamaha Brightwaters Bassmaster Kayak Series. You might uh, want to take a look at the, uh, what do you call that thing, Ronnie? The Tourney X, the scoreboard, the live scoreboard. No, no, oh, no. The, oh, check out the QR code. The QR code. Register. You yeah. want the QR code to learn more about the kayak series, certainly growing as we go through the years. Definitely of interest. You definitely want to check that out. The biggest day in racing just got bigger as Grand Marshal Dwayne The Rock Johnson will kick off the Daytona 500. The Great American Race returns tomorrow, 2.30 Eastern, only on Fox. Big, big day. Maybe the biggest, of course, in NASCAR racing. Here's another look at the Mountain Tower there. Hot Springs, Arkansas, our fantastic host city and host organization. Visit Hot Springs. So thankful to them for welcoming, welcoming us here, the Bassmasters, after more than two decades away. We take a look at our 10 anglers. Now they're distributed. 10 anglers left on championship Saturday. All but two of them in the EQ, elite qualification race, trying to amass points on that. That's how that stands right now. Paul mm. Marks out there fishing today. Easton Father Gill just missed it by one spot. Make it into the top 10 today. And there's Evan Cunn, whom we're watching right now, having a fantastic season. Ditto for Andy Newcomb, Joe Weiberg, Tucker Smith, Emil Wagner, Ish Monroe having a good tournament here to sort of make up for last, last time around at Okeechobee, Dakota Ebar and Clark Ream rounding out our top 10 in points. You got a good mixture there, young guys with Marks and Fothergill and Smith and Emil Wagner. And then you've got a good mix of either they've been pros or currently pros, Ishman Road, Dakota Ebear and Clark Ream. And you've got a couple, like we've mentioned, Andy Newcomb and Joe Weiberg are Missouri anglers. Evan Kung being from Canada. It's a good, good group. Is your tackle warehouse, Bassmaster EQ. Update there, elite qualifier update. It has been so great to, to have Bassmaster come back to uh, to Lake Washita. It's really it's, it's good. It's a unique fishery. It's a unique sort of challenge. And, and Stetson, I, I, you know, we went through a period with the elite series where a hometown angler could not get it done. You remember right. that? It's, oh, yeah. it's kind of changed in the last few years or so. But why is why? I mean. I mean, Jeremiah is just knocking them dead out there today. It means a lot to have local knowledge here. It, it does, and this lake more than any, and I've said this for years, our lakes here in Arkansas can make you one of the best anglers in the world because the fisheries are so tough and they change and they're so diverse. And there's a lot of fish in our lakes, but and they don't get as much pressure, pressure as, say, like a Toledo Bend or a Lake Okeechobee, but 
to me, there's something about them that they, they're just hard to catch them. Ronnie can tell you from the experience he's had, the fish are just challenging to catch. And one thing that you have that Jeremiah has going for him is years of experience, but years of experience knowing the right decisions to make at the right time. And I think that's a, a big key for his success this week. Stetson, I can't tell you how much we've enjoyed. I know you got to pack up to get finished yeah, back and go to truck Toledo. Yep. Toledo been in a, yep. in a few minutes. We got you for a little Giant. while longer. Giant one, bro. Uh, we had a great, I just want to remember what a great week we had two weeks ago. The very Dude, first one fish at a time, uh, baby. Bassmaster no Open monster, on Lake Okeechobee. And Scott Martin, the hometowner, getting it done. I think, and I think there was, it was less about local knowledge of spots because Okeechobee's changed so much for Scott Martin over his history. He's, he's caught fish where there's no more vegetation. He's caught fish where the bank is totally different. But I think for him, it's his local knowledge of patience, fishing in a crowd, knowing you're going to be around a lot of boats. There's confined areas. And so his local knowledge wasn't on a spot. It was on the strategy within the spot. And he gets it done, breaks records left and right, three different records he took. What was it? The total weight for a three day Bassmaster event, the winning margin, and a single day biggest weight. Here they are right yeah, there. Yeah, there they go. Yeah, that was, uh, I don't, he ran out of records to break. I think I said that earlier. I, you know, this, this year represents a, a bigger commitment by the Bassmasters to the, uh, the, the St. Croix Bassmaster Opens. And uh, we were wondering how it would turn out. The first event turned out really great. I mean, an and absolute People, people don't burn. understand how challenging it is to catch them in those crowds on Lake oh, Okeechobee. Gosh, yeah. I've been in some of those situations. And when you're watching guys around you catch fish, for him to be able to stay focused on the task at hand, what he knows he needs to do to win and be able to pull that off in record-breaking fashion is uh, pretty impressive. Said he found his spot on the last hour of practice on Wednesday and actually first time he ever put an exclamation point on his waypoint. Wow. And then it was open on day one. He was boat 162, came in there, found it open. He was stealth mode. He didn't have his boat wrapped. He had his buff over his face, so he kind of snuck in there and caught him up. Looks like we're looking at Matt Baker there, I believe. It's, it's, you know, from a perspective of an angler that's fished a lot of days on this lake, it's easy for me to say this sitting here in this chair, but Matt, you know, changed up, went to the Booyah one knocker, catches his biggest fish of the day, and now you see him back out throwing a jerk bait. Uh, there's a lot of decisions and things going through his head, and I understand that as an angler that, that you know, it's not as easy as we can make it look sitting right yeah. here in the studio, but, uh, Kind of wondering why he's going back to that instead of sticking with that that mm -hmm. hard knocker, one knocker, whichever one he's throwing there. But uh, that bait, the Booyah one knocker, is known on Washita for getting big bites. And, and he, in my opinion, he's in a position, he's fishing this tournament to win. I feel like if he would stick with that bait, especially as we're rolling on, time goes on, that, that's, that bite's going to get better. It's kind of, kind of a surprise to see him put that down so quick. And he could have just seen a fish that he wants to throw mm. at, so he may he may still be committed to it for a while, but we'll see how it plays out. Maybe in an area, you know, maybe he's the lipless is a when there's vegetation present, maybe a jerk baits right. when it's when it's smooth or when it's only timber and that's the subtleties as Jeremiah Kendi, our leader, is hooked up. Maybe keeper number oh, five, come I on, believe. Buddy. Yes. Thank you. Again, not a big fish for Jeremiah there. I think that's, is that fish number five for him? I believe yeah. that is a limit five. for him. Yeah. Second limit of the day, Paul Marks is the other limit. It's not, not a really big fish, but I'm telling you, it's better than average quality from what we've seen so far today from between huh? him and the other guys. And it's just not even quite time yet for that bite to pick up. So I know he's excited. I know in his mind, he, he feels like he's right on track to, to win this tournament. Well, Stetson, what was your estimation of the winning weight here? A guy asked me that. Actually, Colin, my, my teammate, asked me what I thought it would take to win. And 
I want to say I told him 47, 48 pounds. Oh, so I, yeah, yeah. We were looking at 17 a day would be really yeah, strong. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, it was 17 a day for me. As and then when I saw the weights, I thought, whoa, maybe it's going to take more. But I'll tell you right now. He's going to catch some more fish, and he may win it by, you know, him or whoever may win it by over 47, 48 pounds. But I guarantee you it's going to be a tougher day overall. I, I just I just know the lake too well, the conditions those boys are faced with today. It's going to be a lot tougher. Jeremiah had 19 plus on day one, 16 oh, plus on day two. Rope. Right in that right one. That right area. I want to let you know about something that's going on now. It's called the Bass Mast Her Initiative. You get it? Bass Mast Her? It's going to be trying to advance the sport of fishing, not just raise awareness, but advance the sport of fishing among female females worldwide. Uh, hosted by Bassmaster staff, along with professional female anglers. They get to network with a community, help them develop skills, develop confidence on and off the water. If these workshops that got set up, the, the, the subjects would be bass fishing fundamentals, uh, not seasonal patterns, rods and reels, uh, learning your way around a bass boat, very, very important. Uh, opportunity for women to learn about that, uh, casting, uh, uh, lure essentials, and all of that. It's a great, great opportunity. Those workshops coming up in Florida, Alabama, and the St. Lawrence River. You might want to check out the Bass Master Initiative. The St. Croix Bass Master Open at Lake Washita, presented by Seven Reels, sponsored by Minn Kota, by Bass Pro Shops, and by Skeeter Boats. Final day here. Three days of competition started with almost 200 pros, 200 boats on Lake Washington, 40,000 acres of it. And now we're down to 10. The man with the lead to start the day, Jeremiah Kendi, has extended that lead in a big way. Started out with about a pound and a couple ounces, and now he is, uh, well, he's been going to town this morning, and, which is remarkable in that he did not have any fish yesterday until noon. So uh, looking even more formidable at this point right now. And honestly, for him, he's got a, he's off to a good start with a three, almost a three and a half pounder, and then a bunch of fish in that two to two and a half range. So he's, he's absent of a five plus pounder, and if he does that, it's all going to be all but done. But now that he's got a limit, he has extended his lead out, and 47.9 is the baseline now. If you don't have anywhere near that, he's got a limit, he's only culling, but everybody's still working their way to five. Jeremiah from just down the road, Benton, Arkansas, half an hour away. Maybe a little bit more than that away, but lots of experience here. Definitely one of the masters of this particular body of water. Knowing how to fish it through the seasons, I guess, Stetson, is very important. It is, no doubt. Made a key adjustment on his bait, put some new hooks on there so he wouldn't have any dull hooks from hitting all the rocks on the bottom and other things, and first cast after that able to land a keeper and so it seems like every he's staying calm not speeding himself up every decision is calculated and it's equated to another limit that's at minimum your job as an angler is to go out and catch fives right and then from there try to make them bigger if you can Jeremiah not participating in the elite qualifiers program here this year so Top points, actually, as far as EQ qualification, will go to whoever finishes in second place. So the race for second is, is a very important one, too. There we go. Always it. Well, and it's not very often that I get to sit here and, and talk about two guys that I know so well that were in first and second coming into the final day. Uh, Jeremiah and Matt Baker. Matt's another really good guy, good friend of mine, and uh, he's going to make some. He's going to make some moves. His day's not over. I feel confident that he'll he'll make the right decision throughout the day, and uh, he'll get some more good bites. Jeremiah's smallest fish at this point is a pound and twelve ounces. Yep, he's been weighing them, and so he's got a three six, a two seven, a two four, a two pounder, and a one one and three quarter. So. And so far, that 3.6 is oh, the biggest bass it? of the day. Oh. Yep, that's, that's kind of part of our game. I got you. You notice he's kind of getting, this doesn't look the same as what he's been fishing. I, I think now he's kind of changing. 
changing up what he's doing. He's trying to find that, that bigger quality fish. Oh, God. That's a good one. Boom. It's going to make a call. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's getting closer to what we're looking for right there. They get in the guts of these pockets, it's going to be ugly. Well, notice, notice where he was. Yep, you see that rock? You see that gut? Stephanie That's told me yesterday he's going to go strictly to fish places today where he thinks the females are going to set up. Right. And you just heard him mention the guts of the pockets with a little oh. rock on it. He was in here? That's what I was talking about oh, earlier, sure. those he's little ditches, here. those little drains, those Call little washouts with, yeah. with a little bit of rock, like a little bit that. of grass mixed right. in. I want that off. <laughs> and he knows now where they are, no question. Sure, because it was so rough, you know. Looks like another three pounder. For sure. He's got now I got a probably two that are three pounds and up. Which would mean he has the biggest ba bass of the day and the second biggest bass of the day. <laughs> that way the boat will be steel. I can't. You notice how many rods he has on his deck, Stetson. I bet you. Yeah, he's uh, he's committed. That. I'll tell you that. He knows he knows what he's going to do. He knows what it's going to take to win. In this thing. So, what he's doing right now is he's pulling up on the bank so the boat will be still, so he can weigh his fish and get you know get, either balance them or weigh them. I assume he's going to weigh them just so he can get a good idea of what he's got and which one he needs to call. That way I'll get accurate readings on all these. There you go. I see I got a 174. I can go ahead and call it out. It's nowhere close to my other ones, but then I'm going to reweigh all my other ones. Huh. And that's number two. There's a 174. Three fourteen. Two ninety nine. Three pounds even. Get rid of number two. Kendi may be thinking towards that 2020, 20, 25 uh, world championship. We'll have to ask him he is. about Ray Roberts. Yeah. But first, yeah. because he's not signed up for him yet, if he wins today, you better take some of that winnings, sign up for Logan Martin and you fall Oklahoma, and then we can talk classic. Until, until he's in it. Until he's in it. He needs to get on the waiting yeah. list. Yeah. Yeah. Until, he's, until he's in. Good stuff from our anglers today here. All 10 of them out there working so hard on Lake Washita. Trying to crack the code out there. Jeremiah Kendi kind of had the code in his head, it seems like, Stetson. Yes, he did. And they're, they're, it, this, this day's not over. You're going to see some of those guys from down the pack catch some good quality fish. Another 10-pounder could be at hand. Uh, Matt Baker, he's kind of he's kind of sitting back there just waiting on a big bite or two. So a lot of fishing left today, guys. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We'll have more coverage for you. Stetson Blaylock, can't thank you enough for being here. And Glad to be out here. the door, heading to Toledo Bend to fish to win on the Bassmaster Elite Series. We That's wish right. you the best of luck. Coverage continues at 1130 back Eastern back. Time on Bassmaster.com. We will see you here on FS1 a week from today at Toledo Bend. Watching a BASS presentation. Hey, welcome back. This is Bassmaster Live, and this is the St. Croix Bassmaster Open from Hot Springs, Arkansas, Lake Washita. Sponsored by Seven. Live coverage presented by Maxim. And we are ready to go into the final four hours of fishing on Championship Saturday on this day. We started out with 199. 
uh, pros in this competition here. We got down to 10 for this final day, this championship day. A lot at stake here, including a trip to the World Championship, the Bass Pro Shops Bass Master Open of 2025. Hey, welcome to the Bassmaster Studios, sponsored by Marathon. Tommy Sanders here with Ronnie Moore and our guest now, our new guest analyst. Hey, Bo Browning. Bo Browning, a great, great start to your season. Actual EQ competitor up here with us today. I know you'd like to be out there today. <laughs> most definitely, most definitely. But I'm glad I can be up here, you know, watching the home waters, getting to see different guys from all across the country come in and break down my home lake. And today's the day I sit back and take notes, and I can't wait to, to learn something, you know. Were you surprised to find two guys from our two locals, really, on top when we started this day today? No, because I know these guys. <laughs> I compete against these guys on the weekends, and, and, and I know they're some of the best of the best. And when you put them on their home lake, uh, they're going to shine. So I, I'm, I'm happy to see them in there. I'm happy to see some, some other faces in there, too, guys that might have needed a little bit better finish that are able to jump up. So. It's exciting. You know, there's a lot of good stuff uh, going down today and a lot on the line. And like I said, I'm just ready to learn. One big thing with Bassmaster, we hadn't been to Wachita since 2002 when we were there in the fall. And it was obviously tough fishing in the fall. And then every other national event has been in the heat of the summer. So we were excited when we saw 11 pounders in pre-practice and the winter conditions we could have. Were you surprised? 9-14 on day one and a 10-14 yesterday were weighed in? I'm surprised there's there's two. I guess I, when the when the 914 got weighed in yesterday, it was right in front of me at the at the line. So I was like, that's pretty normal. That that happens. But then another one yesterday. <laughs> Um, we're starting to see some fish come out of Lake Washita that we haven't seen. That's the two biggest fish I've ever seen in my life come out of this lake. Evan so. Kung definitely had the big bass check oh, in his man. hand and he realized, oh, there's still some more time. <laughs> Somebody's going to catch a 10-14. Didn't think that. Yeah, it's fun while it lasted, I guess. Let's take you out on the water. Take a look at some of the action we have seen during the course of this day, this championship Saturday. Andy Newcomb from Missouri fishing the EQs this year. We got a taste of him last year at Lake of the Ozarks. Tommy made our top 10. That's his home body of water. We knew that this would probably be one circled since it's in his neck of the woods and he is very successful today. One cool thing, he's had like six or seven different baits in play. He talked about the chatterbait was key, also a wacky rig, and then we've seen him with a crankbait and a Carolina rig this morning. So multiple baits for Andy Newcomb up the river in some dirtier water. Let's take a look at Matt Baker. Matt Baker, one of our locals that we were talking about just a few minutes ago from Glenwood, just down the road. Uh, also had a college career at uh, ATU up in Russellville. And Matt Baker, currently in fourth place, started the day in second place. You fished against him, I'm sure. I've, he's taken a lot of my money over the years. <laughs> How would you draw the, if Greeson, which is down the road, maybe DeGray, are his home lakes compared to Wachita? How do they compare to this body of water? Uh, both have the similar uh, dockless kind of highland mountainous reservoir type of feel. So to see him come from lakes like that and apply it here is not really surprising at all. It was a slow start today for uh, Blake Schroeder. Blake Schroeder from Texas today, but he has kind of uh, got, it, got things turned on a little bit through the last couple of hours, as a matter of fact, and he is back in the middle of it. Yeah, if you, we saw a lot of guys catch a three pounder, two and a half pounder, another three pounder this morning. Uh, but then we had that lull, and during that lull, he was the only one thriving. He now has a limit and moving up from 10th. I talked to him on the phone. He said, I had a bad Okeechobee, and I'm 10th going into the final day. Everything I gain on Championship Saturday is a bonus points-wise. You could gain six, seven, eight points today, and you'll need those at the end of the year. Exactly. Lake Schroeder from White House, Texas there, right in the Tyler Lufkin area. Had a rough start down at Okeechobee, but making up for it big time yeah. here. That's the Fishing only way you can do it. Everything yeah. in the world. Every triple digit finish you have in the opens, you better have a, a single digit finish to counteract it, and he's getting it done. Over to Paul Marks, who is our Tackle Warehouse EQ points leader, a fourth at Okeechobee, and came into today in the top 10 in eighth place and moved up to second. He's extending his lead with every place he gets above eighth place today, Tommy. Paul Marks. Shows that he's got a lot of game down there at Okeechobee, and he's got a, a, a lot of variety in his game as well as he comes down here. And as you say, so so well versed in his electronics that uh, you know he's going to be a he's going to be a player. There's there no are doubt some about it. there are some lakes if once you get out of the Ozarks that these places like Wa Washita could look like, and one would be Lanier with the standing timber offshore fishing conditions. You could think of East Tennessee in some places as well, and they're all chasing this guy, Jeremiah Kendi. 
Benton, Arkansas, just down the road. He, as our last guest, Stetson Blaylock, said, this guy has taught him quite a bit. And a lot of people are watching Jeremiah today, rooting him on, knowing a classic berth could be at stake, especially if he wins, he'll fish the rest of the division. Bo, is this the guy everyone was fearing? This is the, the guy everybody yeah. was fearing. He yeah. was one of two. Him and Kevin Brown coming into this tournament were two guys that you knew were probably either going to be right there in the hunt to win or they might not catch anything. And, and Jeremiah is a well-known Arkansas hammer. That's literally hammer. the hook I just changed. Did you get a chance to watch him fish right this morning, any? I did not. I did not, so I'm interested to, to see what he's doing. Got a little bit of a, a lipless crankbait. You know, the, the crawfish patterns that we expect this time of the year. A little bit of rock, a little bit of grass mixed in as well. Kind of those spots since he's fished here so much. He knows right. I can, I'm going to make this angle. Maybe looking at his electronics a little bit. And then we saw him get into a pocket, Tommy, where maybe there's a little bit of a ditch cut into a pocket with some rock as well this yeah, that afternoon. Was the first time he sun, got out of the wind. He'd been yeah. seeking that wind all day, yeah. for sure. The scary thing for the field is he caught some of his better fish in the afternoons. Right. Both days. Boom. Mm. Jeremiah Kendi has not fished a Bassmaster event since 2002, since the last time the Bassmasters were here. Uh, I think uh, Greg Hackney won that tournament, but uh, he has certainly been active in other circuits for sure and successful. Bo remembers circuits. that one. He was at that tournament. He was about 12, you know, a year old, maybe 10 months old at that time. <laughs> That's a remarkable memory. <laughs> they wouldn't let me in it, Tommy. That was. <laughs> that was. That's a disappointment. That's early right. disappointment right there. But you, you, you got over. Got here Local. Mike Kendi. No fish till noon yesterday, and look at what he's done so far today. One guy who started in the top five slid off a little bit, but did start his day with a solid keeper. Logan Johnson is still not yet to a limit, so we go out to him. He's trying to stay in the top five. It's a big one. Back there with you. Come here, girl. This one there. Freaking choked it too. Well, they want to eat, they'll eat. I just, I thought she was bigger than that when she jumped, but she definitely fills a void in the box. Logan's been very consistent this week. He's had 16, 13 and 16, now. seven. He said on the phone, I've lacked a big bite. It seems like at the end of the day, he's had two and a half to four pounds is, is all the fish and he's gotten 16 and change each day because of that. You think that's an area of the lake type thing where, where you know, you're living in a place where it's a lot of consistent fish, but maybe no chance for a six plus pounder or a lot less likely? I definitely think we have sections of the lakes that, that have different quality of fish. You know, down the lake around that Brady Mountain area where, where we took off from, you see a lot of giant fish. Guys might come in with a limit for 19 pounds, 20 pounds, but they have a eight, nine, sometimes 10 pounders. Uh, and in certain areas of the lake, like the West End is more, very consistent with like two and three quarters of three pounders. Get back out to our leader now, Jeremiah Kendi. We've seen him at this spot early, one of yeah. his first stop of the day, or one of his first two stops of the day. He's 
Sitting just over 13 pounds now, unofficially, according to Bass Track. Had 19 plus on day one, 16. A change on day number two. What's that? <laughs> that fleet was gonna get one. That's where it was gonna be. I've caught one three days in a row right there. That's my little, my little sweet spot. Ow! You can hook me all you want, girl. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Close to three, I think. Two seventy something, maybe. is close to his third three pounder yeah three of those we kind of got a hint right there that local knowledge coming into play you heard him say this is my little sweet spot i've caught one here the past three days that that goes to show the amount of time that he's put in on this lake and and how well he knows where those better quality fish set up and that map location, we're getting word it wasn't correct when we came to him. He's in a different part of the lake, oh, okay. which may explain it. His move, since he's got his limit, he moved, he caught that three pounder in a, in a pocket like that where the sun's beating down on it. It may not physically be warm out there, Bo, but the difference in like a sunny day in one of those shallow pockets versus a uh, cloudy all day, can you speak to how quick these fish will move, even if it's 48 degree, 50 degree water, just the presence of sun this time of the year. No doubt, and you know, <clears throat> weather is everything for these fish. They like a nasty day, but you see guys that on a sunny day, they might tend to go towards more dirty water. But the other thing that I, I noticed yesterday was uh, the walleye are spawning, which sounds weird, you know, talking about walleye spawning in a bass tournament. But that is the first indication on Lake Washington normally that things are starting to get moving. Okay. Which it's weird being that it's middle of February and the walleye are spawning early. Normally that's like a mid-March type thing. But the fact that they were spawning, you know, during this tournament goes to show that these bass are getting into a mode where they're about to start making big moves. There's walleye spawning all over yeah, or up tell the me river? About that. I have no idea about walleye they, they, spawning. They spawn down the lake normally. Uh, down the lake. Okay. Down the lake in the main lake area on points and things like that. And do you, you know that based on how they look on your graph? Or just that they're actually on that spot, like on a point, you know like, okay, well if they're there, then it's, yeah. When you catch them, you can tell oh, okay. they're spawning. So this is the, the updated location of where Jeremiah Kendi is. Now he called with that run, he's up to 13, 13 on bass track on the day, pushing 50 pounds for the event. Now his smallest fish is two and a quarter. He's got two over three, he's got two over two and a half, and he's got two and a quarter as his smallest. Wow. 
I'd say that one wanted it. <laughs> Got me another pet, didn't I? Tommy, I try not to waste words, but I just listed as smallest as a two and a quarter in my last rundown of his limit, and that's, that was null and void. It's gonna yeah. be, it's Boy. gonna be much bigger than that now. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, we'll just spot lock right here. How about that? Okay, 242, 207. We're gonna get rid of a 207. We should have got rid of that while ago. That we'll might, get rid of it now, I guess. Huh? That might be his biggest one. That, that it's, looks it's like the close, first one. That looks not, like yeah, a, I mean, the looks... three, three thirty something, a three six, you know, three seven somewhere, three eight. Three thirty nine. Wow, 39. just under three and a half pounds. Just a, that's a pound and a quarter call. He'll be close to fifteen now, if not Damn, at fifteen. Right Making it that much harder for anybody to catch him. That's the scary thing, though, still, and Bo knows this. He's having a really good day. He's almost got five three-pounders, 15 pounds. That's what you want. One bite. Someone could still catch a seven to eight-pounder sure, here. Like that's, they, that's, that's the, the scariest expected. thing in the world. They could have two days. Yeah, 18 <laughs> pounds with a nine-pounder. <laughs> right. We're going to take a break. Jeremiah Kendi, commanding lead at this point. C49.9. I don't even think that's reflected in there yet, just with how quick that no. one came in. No. Yeah. Yeah. Paul Marks trying to hang in there. Christian Ostrander making a good showing for himself, moving up the leaderboard. During the course of today, Logan Johnson's got on some fish in the, in the recent hour and so forth. Blake Schroeder having a better late morning than early morning. We will be back to Hot Springs, Arkansas and Lake Washita when we return. The St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Lake Washita, presented by Seven, is brought to you by Mercury, by PowerPole, and by Progressive Insurance. We thank those sponsors for a great, great view of this tremendous, wonderful place, beautiful place up in the Washita Mountains of Western Arkansas, one of the oldest mountain ranges in the country, older than the Rockies, as a matter of fact. There's Lake Lee Mountain Dam, uh, which forms the first impoundment on the Washita River as it flows down from uh, near Rich Mountain, further west in the state of Arkansas. There is your unofficial results right now, or leaderboard as it stands right now, with Jeremiah Kendi, Local angler from Benton, Arkansas, the man on top, and just absolutely kind of running roughshod over everybody else <laughs> out here. Bo Browning, you've, you've uh, put in many hours here uh, on Lake Washita, and as, as you look at that leaderboard and as you look at these scenes here, what, fishing through the seasons here, what's, what's the biggest challenge this time of year, the pre-spawn, the so-called pre-spawn? Really trying to get in tune with these fish. You know, it's a unique place, and uh, like we talked about earlier, there's a lot going on, you know, like I mentioned the walleye spawning, which is normally a sign that we see later in March, you know, that, yeah. that things are starting to happen and, and getting that spawning swing. So fish are all over the place, but that's a unique thing about this lake that we've uh, I talked to Ronnie about it before this tournament was uh, guys can pick their strengths a lot too. If they really want to, you see guys doing a lot of different things. You know, Jeremiah's throwing a trap shallow, Paul's out, uh, catching fish off forward-facing sonar uh, around shad, I'm sure. And you know, you can find the dirty water, you can pick your strengths. And a lot of guys that came to me before this tournament asking about what are we doing, what do we need to do, what to look out for. I told every one of them, just pick what feels right, what you like to do and roll with it. That's the best decision I feel like you can make on, on this lake. What's your favorite way to catch them this time of year? I like to catch them in the dirt. After this week, I think I'm going to need to get out in the middle with everybody and do <laughs> yeah. some forward-facing sonar a little bit more. Is that, what, is that what happened yesterday? That's what happened oh, yesterday. I'm, I thought mm -hmm. I was going to make it happen in the dirt. And so did you do it in the dirt on day one? I did. I did. So on the bright, sunny, calm day, you did it up shallow, and then on the day that's yeah, nastier, like, windier, you'd expect it up shallow, and, and it didn't work. That's Arkansas doesn't make sense. It doesn't when know. I moved here from North Carolina, it never like, claims to. <laughs> if you think you know, if you think you know what it is, do the opposite. Right. I like catching fish, whatever, but. And I can use my phone to check my. 
Jeremiah. Well, Bo, Jeremiah is right at 17 pounds a day average. Was that kind of estimated what, weight yeah. to think you That was That was what I estimated to win, mm -hmm. as 17, 18 a day to win. Um, Honestly, though, overall down the down the line, I did not expect it to be that good. I was thinking 30 pounds would get a man in the top 10, 12 to 13 day would make a uh, make a check, and you know it was kind of close. But really, I saw better weights up top, and consistent weights, I guess, is what really caught me off guard. Yeah. Was guys catching 15 and 15, 15 and 16. I figured you would see 17s and 13s, and 13s and 17s, vice versa. Uh, so the consistent big bags really really caught me off guard. We're just looking at uh, Evan Kung's screen there. Evan currently in sixth place. You could see that he was either backing up or he had mm -hmm. panned around. The, the cone arrow was pointing towards the back of the boat. So he, we were looking behind where he was looking just moments ago. That's why it was probably way deeper in the drop 80 feet compared to where he might be looking now. Tung caught that nine pound, 14 ounce in his day one limit of 19 pounds, nine ounces. Personal best that he had set in practice here. <laughs> That's what Hank Weldon said to Zach uh, Gutramat yesterday was, did you think on the schedule that Wachita would be the one where you catch a 10-14? And definitely wouldn't think if you caught a 9-14 you would lose big bass, but then how many people have done that? Jacob Bigelow came down from Wisconsin and caught like an 11 or something in pre-practice. Absolutely crazy. And, and it's crazy that the big bass at Okeechobee was Tharps 10-3. Yeah. We they beat that hey, at a watch tower. You never would have thought that. Steve never. Bowman, we were we were talking about it yesterday at the weigh-in that we didn't expect Lay Lake to put out the biggest bass of no. the Elite last year, and right. Christy did it. So That's it's, exactly you know, right. can yeah. happen anywhere That's in the a one, flash. You know, even if Tharp didn't catch it on forward-facing, uh, this one was at Washita. You know, Christy didn't catch that one on forward face. We are seeing more and bigger bass than we've ever seen before because, like we were mentioning earlier with Stetson, half of the lake at Washita you can't fish because it's too deep. It's over. Right. You know, you would never do it before. Now it's accessible water to maybe catch a big one. It's 12 inches all species, right? right. 13. 13. 13. 13 inches. Okay. And Evan's kind of dealt with that all week. You know, Evan had good weight on day one with the 19.9. 19.9, but 9.14 of that was one fish. And then yesterday at 13 pounds. So without that nine pounder on day one, he's got a limit of two to two and a half pounders. Same right. thing as yesterday. And so today it just seems like he's, you know, until he gets a bigger bite, he's just around that quality of fish right now. Yeah. Kind of what we talked about earlier that, with different regions of the lakes. He yeah. might be in a two and a half, three pound region of the lake. It was very weird to see a lot of the guys who had a eight, seven, seven plus pounder had spotted bass in their bags. And a bunch of guys who caught two and a half to four pound largemouth didn't have a spotted bass. So it's one of those things of you're going to be around the smallest fish in the lake and the biggest fish in the lake at the same time. And like you mentioned earlier with Jeremiah, that there's always that possibility in the back of his mind, knowing this lake as good as anyone, that somebody could catch another nine, ten pounder today. We've seen it two days in a row and jump all the way up and surpass him still. I mean, you yeah. know as a local he's got to worry about that when you're in the lead he probably knows he's in the lead and and but still he's thinking oh i'd hate for that <laughs> that to happen and take all this away another possible scenario he catches a nine pounder or that yeah. and yeah. absolutely slams the door yeah. on it yeah. i think his biggest this week has been like a five right so he's very consistent in the just good consistent bag. well the kong and Guttermott. Their big fish were about a third of their two-day weight. Right. Yeah. Right. That was the X factor, them going from barely missing a check to being in the top in ten the top out of shot to win. <laughs> big fish good. <laughs> yep, almost always. 
Got a good distribution of our top 10 on the lake. It's good to see a lot of different views of it. Fly over for you there. It's been a while since we've checked in with Andrew Hargro Hargrove, one of our two Texas anglers in the field here of 10. Bo Stetson said you can kind of break the lake up into three sections. You exactly. kind of agree, definitely. Definitely, you know, and, and where Hargrove is right here is probably the most consistent area. You know, you see Newcomb on the far west, and I noticed that just a second ago. It can be volatile at times, but Hargrove's right here where, where I know he probably feels like he needs to be. Stuck on one fish. Enough. That's another good one, man. Oh. It's been a low, it's been a grind. Oh. I don't know. It's been tough, been tough, tough, tough. This wind this morning, I just couldn't get it in front of him. I, I saw a bunch and uh, then uh, got we left for a little bit, came back and uh, I could get it in front of, of a few of them. They just wouldn't eat. They'd follow it, follow it, follow it. And I saw that one pitched over there and he come straight up to it and ate it just like you never seen a bait before. So, I don't know, we need, we need uh, three more bites, just like that one. Say again? I mean, it's, uh, sun popped out, it's kind of slicked off a good bit. If it stays like this the rest of the day, then I got a shot. Um, I don't, it, uh, like I said earlier this morning, I think I can get around them. I just gotta get it in front of them and get them to bite. So we'll see what happens. I don't know. I'm, that was a that was a big deal right there. I needed that bite bad just to give me some more confidence. I was starting to get worried and felt like maybe I wasn't doing the right thing and maybe I needed to leave, go somewhere else, and just try to run around and find something else. But oh. That's it, man. I need three more and uh, scare them boys. So we'll see what happens. I, uh, man, I, I really, I haven't fished much over here in this particular little area, but um, I come up from about 30 foot of water just a second ago. And, and when I got to the shallower area, he was just swimming around down there on the bottom. So. Hargrove has gone top 10 in two of his last three open appearances. <sighs> was 61st at Okeechobee. Right, there's one right there. Three of his last 60. four. Three of even that, yeah, if we keep going back, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Ozar Harris, Harris Chain, Chain. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Then Okeechobee was, uh, okay, sure. get, you, get, you, get you started. But you, said, you said he was thinking about bailing at some yeah, point. Yeah, he Not thought, you know, I might give this a year, and then based off his first seven opens last year, it was looking more like you know, it was a fun year, and I learned, and that's it. Oh, then he yeah. goes and gets a top 10, gets another top 10, and he's like, I'm back in. You know how yeah, tournament fishing, you get a little success back in, and so he came back, and he's one of our, you've got now two anglers that finished in the top 15 in this event from Tarleton State, a Texas college fishing, yeah. you know, Dakota Ebear, we know that name on the national oh, yeah. level. 
from Tarleton State and same and now Andrew Hargrove is another one making his mark from that school so it's very cool and we talked about it a little bit earlier but Christian Ostrander if you don't know who that is he's from the California Delta region of California um, really doesn't grow up with a, a family history or a background in in bass fishing or tournaments Ishman Rowe has been his mentor and help over the last few years, and he's guided all of last year just to have enough money to be able to do this and, and feel comfortable financially traveling for the Open. So it's good to see him pop a top 10 in his second one. The weirdest bite. You just feel the blade stop moving, and you just gotta wait. If you set the hook, they will 100%, you will lose them. It's the weirdest thing. 178, number five. Little buddies, but you know what? They're starting to bite. Water's getting warm. We're gonna mess up some big ones. They're obviously biting the chatterbait. Let's keep out of here. Starting to warm up. He also said his style was spinner baits, crank baits, chatter baits. He's not necessarily a live scope fanatic. He can do it, but much more of a power fishing ca uh, California Hargrove, than a finesse. Hargrove had fallen down to ninth at three pounders, second fish, got him back to third, and maybe uh, Ostrander's last fish may put him back in third. Well, there it is, though, with uh, Jeremiah Kendi still on top there, top the 50 pound mark as well, unofficially. Paul Marks hanging in there in second place, but a lot of work to do if he's going to run down our leader, Andrew Hargrove, as Sue just mentioned. Got himself crawl, crawled up a little bit there, the leaderboard. Evan Kong at his limit now. And Christian Ostrander caught another keeper right there. So we got plenty more fishing time left, uh, three and a half hours left to go from fishing here at Lake Washita. St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Lake Washita, presented by Seven Lures. Here is our fantastic host city, it's Hot Springs, Arkansas, Maxim, our great sponsor, making a lot possible today. It's been great to have all those people on board, and you as well, as we take you through this championship Saturday on the second stop of the year, the Bassmaster EQ. EQ means Elite qualified, that's what these guys, most of our, the majority of our anglers we've seen these past two weeks have been working toward that. Paul Marks of Coming Georgia is one of those and had a great start to his year down at Lake Okeechobee. Bo, you were a part of that top 10 and you were, it seemed like there was five areas of Lake Okeechobee that had two anglers that succeeded. You know, you were around Brandon McMillan at times, Easton was over by Scott Martin, you had Randall Tharp, Matt Adams. Uh, Sam George and uh, Austin Cranford were down there. And then in the Rim Canal, we had Tucker Smith and Paul Marks. And so, uh, did you ever try that, the op more open water? No, I never really dove off into that. I, and I think the biggest thing was, I watched a lot of Bass Live before that getting ready. And, and I saw that 10 house area that I was in really performing in that tournament. And not knowing anything, I just went in, I looked at it, it felt right, and just hunkered down on it and just tried to make it work my way. I didn't want to get off into the scoping thing and try to reinvent the wheel. Paul Marks with a 16.3 and a 15.12, super consistent. At a place where it's kind of hard to be consistent, right, Paul? It is, it yeah. is. But it's showcasing the, the potential that Lake Washita has, you know, this is the first time we've had a tournament of this caliber come in. Yeah. Florida. Got a little audio break up there from Paul. We will get that fixed in a minute. We want to hear what he has to He'll redo that for Well, us. it's the same thing. I mean, it's the it's that Blakely's region. When you get tucked up in there, there's so many little oh, yeah. nooks and crannies in that far east side of it. And you're on the north side of the lake. If you're on the north side of Washita and you get stranded and you got to walk through the woods, you got a long way until you find somebody. <laughs> you got to walk the south side, basically, yeah. if you were. The, <laughs> the south side, you can get to a road a little quicker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah surrounded by a national forest, it's... Uh, 
I, I'm thankful for every bit of signal we got here because <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. And the Blakeleys is a region that has a lot to offer as well. You know, staying in timber, grass, now that's kind of back on the, the rise again, and it's popular in, in the Blakeleys. But like you said, you get two, two elements of timber and grass in the same area. It's just going to hold, hold fish. So not surprising at all to see guys catching them out of the Blakeleys this week. How would you rank this place, Bo, this uh, Lake Washita for pressure versus a place like uh, a Gunnersville or a, uh, say a Dardanelle even? Right. I, I don't think it gets near the pressure as like a Gunnersville. It's not as popular as like a Gunnersville. A lot of people don't, and I think a lot of it has to do with tournaments not coming here near as often. So people don't just flock to this place like they do a Gunnersville mm -hmm. or an Okeechobee or anything like that. But then you look at a place like Dardanelle, which is in a little north of here, two hours north, and it gets a lot of pressure, but there's a lot more fishermen up in the Dardanelle okay. region. There's lots more tournaments going on, small local tournaments. Yeah. And you know, you see that pressure start to kind of affect the body of water. And you've got two lakes to kind of alleviate pressure in hot springs. Like, right. you know, like I know that local tournaments are a big deal. And I was like, surely not with how many locals fished in the open, you're not going to have a you know, a local tournament at Washita today, there's one at Hamilton, you know, like there's yeah. a series. Oh, yeah. Congrats to our guys who would normally join us. Sorry you can't fish with us. We're going to be at Hamilton on Saturday. Yeah. Good luck at, at Washita in the open, you know. Yeah. Bo, can you estimate how many tournaments there are every year? Because like Gunnersville, I know they say there's over 400. Yeah, we don't have near that. I'm going to say real tournaments, bigger tournaments, I'm going to say one a month one a month. So that's really not that bad if you yeah, break it. That's not. 12 big tournaments a year compared to like a Gunnersville or something. And then you got the Tuesday nighters. Or and then you got a lot morning. of night tournaments. But I mean, that's Now, if you loads, showed up here loads. in July, August, September, the lake's going to be packed. It's boating. just not, yeah, it's yeah, just boating. It's This is the premier, other than Hamilton, it's the premier that's exactly right. boating lake. And that you does take a toll. You spread out though on the the pontoon boat spread out pretty good. Right. Have you are you a pontooner? So I've well I've been out there. You've been known to pontoon. <laughs> He's doing a different kind of scoping. Yeah, you know, Bo. Oh, I see. <laughs> I want to ask Bo a little trivia question. That we had four other Bass Pro level events here. Good ones in practice. How old was your dad for the first one? That's my oh. question. For the first one. Yeah. It was the 12th, here's a hint, it was the 12th BASS event ever. I'm going to say he was 13. Three. He was th about say, three. How old yeah. do you think your dad is? Gosh. How old is your dad? That's, see, you had to know two things. You had to know how old your dad was. <laughs> You got ambushed on that. Yeah, yeah, you I'm did. Getting, oh, I'm getting, yeah, there's no way that's one, deal. <laughs> that's one of Such's trivias, you know. Bill Dance won here in 1969. Really? That is crazy. And you know who Free won classic. the second one here? The local guy. Bobby, Bobby Murray? Murray. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Tommy's on. He was there at the weigh-in. Was so he yesterday? yesterday? So is this the fourth yeah. BASS visit? Fifth. Fifth. There was an invitational Jerry Ryan won in 81. Oh, okay. Wow. And so think about that. Hackney mentioned that. Jeremiah, Jeremiah Kendi, it's not mm -hmm. over. But if he wins, he gets to join a list of winners at Washita that include Bill Dance, Bobby Murray, Greg Hackney, Jerry Ryan, and Jeremiah Kendi. That's a pretty big That is a big freaking time. stud list yeah, there. Yeah. That is some history. Mixing both worlds. Jerry Ryan's from my neck of the woods. That's of right. North Carolina. That's right. and then all right, Bo, top 10, you're 16th. You're going to leave here 16th in the EQ points. You feel feel pretty comfortable the rest of the season going in. You got it. That's a pretty good place. You know, it's, it's a good uh, – I, I was telling Tommy earlier, I went into Okeechobee looking to survive. I wanted to survive Okeechobee, and then I came into this tournament looking to thrive. I kind of did it backwards. I went to Okeechobee and thrived, and then I came to my home lake and survived. So. I'm looking at it like I survived Okeechobee with a 53rd place finish and Ooh. thrived here with the top 10 but in the results. same place. Ooh. Oh, gracious. They're killing me. Matt's another one of our <laughs> incredibly for talented local anglers. He actually dominated this past year, it's fair to say. 
on the local level. Ronnie, I'm sure you heard about this. He didn't he win Greer's. At least I saw something there. Two Greer's. of our major solo yeah. trails and one AOY at the end of the year. Wow. I mean, lots and lots of talent, and he's pretty young. I think he's only 22 or 23. A little bit well, older. He was, I know he's fishing college in 21. So yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah. He's not long out of college. I yeah. mean. Well, with NIL these days, Tommy, you could be like 29 <laughs> and fishing in college. I'm just kidding. It's a reaction by day. I just got to land on some big ones. So, Suits, to answer your question earlier, I do feel I feel good with where I'm at, with where I'm at in the point standing to, to continue. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm ready to get to somewhere I can Probably do my homework like I did at Okeechobee and go into it with an open mind. I'm glad to have this one behind me <laughs> and with the nine is, million things I feel like I could have done here. Is there pressure at home, more relaxed pressure There's so pressure much at home. pressure. There's, <laughs> there's a home field disadvantage that definitely plays yeah, into these guys. Everybody says that. Over to Logan Johnson. So what's your next, your next stop is going to be Santee or Santee. you got anything else on the card before Santee, that? Santee, um, I think that's, that's the next that's thing the we next have. One. And then we'll have some Bassmaster College stuff starting yeah. shortly after that. Yeah! <clears throat> oh, hunt back right there, son. Give me some hat. Logan from earlier today. Had a slow start. That's the one thing that I'll always love about our five fish format in a you know five fish limit is that no one's speeding you up. It's just you. You can go catch a limit before nine o'clock and feel good, but they're not the right size. You can get one bite an hour and it'd be the right size. Like it's all about, you know, even in the last hour you could have none and catch a limit and be back in the game. So you're never out of it with a five fish limit format, you know, of being able to, for Logan, he can go if every time he sets the hook, it's a three pounder, you can wait him out. I turn the heat get on to 15 that. by the end of the day. <laughs> and Hargrove mentioned something like that, you know, getting, you could tell he was kind of calm catching that last good one that we watched yeah. a little bit earlier. He was starting to get the ball rolling, and you noticed he wasn't really. He said he was starting. Oh, well, he made it sound like he was starting stage. to get there, well, but now he's starting the wind to, supposed to die down here. calm down, and yeah. things are starting to line up later in the day. He fills his limit with three, three and a half we had pounders. A chamber of he's Commerce right with him on day one, and then yesterday was wasn't bad until the wind got up in the afternoon, and the day it's just absolutely frigid. I mean, I never would have thought at 11, almost 11.30, I still can't feel my hands. Welcome to Arkansas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you need some bad weather, we'll, we'll accommodate you. Just wait. It'll happen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's almost 40 degrees out there. Yeah. yeah. It's climbed up from... Yeah. Could be worse. I told Kyle Jesse it's 72 and here in studio, so he's, <laughs> it should be good there. Yeah. It got cold. We were at the way It was three. cold, yeah. It was on my car... The my, gauge said 69 degrees, and when we left, it was under 44. Yeah, it was weird to see a lot of guys with strong summer sunglass tans day one, and then be toboggans day two. Yeah, goosebump. <laughs> nice one. There's a decent one. Look at that. Gone. Choked it. Is he related to right off the end of that piece of wood right there, just like he's from Texas. I did so yeah. I doubt it, but yes, that's what I I thought about I looked at I saw time. it and last night and that and checked. We needed that one. We need a bunch more like it though. If they both made the elites, we'll say they're related. <laughs> They'd have to room together. I would, I would hope. <laughs> Speaking of rooming together, your uh, running mate, Easton Fothergill, is doing very well. I've got a pretty good roommate. I've got a pretty good roommate. I'm just trying to keep up with him at this point. <laughs> That's not easy. Not easy he's, at all. He's kind of having a charmed year this year. And you know you see that a lot, too. But 
roommates kind of shining together. Tucker you know, and Paul. And Tucker and Paul, two of the guys that, that room together in there. Both are having really good seasons to a start, you know, so far. Matt and Kendy. No, I'm Matt. just kidding. No. <laughs> they are good buddies, though, so. Little spot. I think he's going to cold, though. Let's just toss number one. Told Tommy this. You fished the opens. Now I think, I think you took me. At, no, you went out in my boat at Ross Barnett when you were when you fished co angler in the yeah. opens to watch your dad fish Ross Barnett on the final day, and he almost won. He won. Or he won he that won one. That he won one. that one. Yeah. And uh, so now you're fishing the opens. It's. I told Tommy this is my favorite series. I love the elites. I love the classic. I love those moments. But getting aware of new faces. A lot of regions represented and different stories Man, to see a, a Blake good. Schroeder and a Christian picks. Ostrander yeah. and you don't know who they are and then three tournaments down the road you're like this guy is legit and you just it's cool to see how many good fishermen are in the country that we get to finally showcase. No doubt, no doubt. A guy like Andy Start Newcomb is another one as well. Right, yeah. here. Like, right now. Did you fish any opens last year? Did you I fish a not. division? No. no. You did the year prior though, right? My senior year of high school was 2019. 19. I fished the central Kinda division. Kind of seems like they like this chatter bait though. Last fish put Schroeder at 10 pounds, a little bit over, up to second place. Wow. From 10th to second. He has turned yeah. it around today. He's still got a couple of one pounders and change. Still nine pounds back is the problem. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah he's, he's looking for that one bite, and we were going to have, it's going to be the same scenario next week, I feel, for the Bassmaster Lead Series event. Any swing of the hook set could be a nine or 10 pounder. Toledo's on fire, and that was one of the stops last year for the Bassmaster Opens in April. Ben Milliken, if you didn't know who he was after the first event when he got a good finish at Eufaula, you knew who he was at Toledo Bend, notching a win. And, Almost making history, top five weight ever. Okay. Go. So. Sorry, man, I'm freaking pumped. We know about that coal. You gotta keep them going while they're this hot. There's like a loop. We had Stetson Blaylock in here a little early, yes. and he said it's gonna be on oh, at Toledo Bend this year as well, for sure. One thing that for fans to get a little bit of an exciting thought about it, uh, it's warming up. The, the nights aren't as cold in Louisiana as they were a few weeks ago. Days are getting into the 60s and 70s more consistently, and the water level is up. It's normally never this close to full pool, so we're going to say it's high even though it's below full pool because oh, yeah, it doesn't yeah. get this high. It's relatively So the high. fact that warming days, higher water, it could be more shallow fish. We could see some frog bites by the end right. of it, you know? There's overgrowth in the water as well. Ben Milliken, graduate of the 23 EQs made his way to the Bassmaster Elite Series. He'll be fishing at Toledo Bend, to be sure, Texas Angler. And we can't wait to bring you, and we will bring you in just a matter of a few days, the Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite from Toledo Bend Reservoir, Manny, Louisiana. About the same age as this reservoir right here, about a little bit younger than this reservoir. February 22nd through the 25th. Coverage the first two days on Bassmaster.com and a week from today. We'll be coming your way at 8 a.m. Eastern Time on FS1 with uh, day number three as well as Championship Sunday. St. Croix Bassmaster Open, second stop of the year. Lake Washita, this gem of a lake up in the Washita Mountains of Arkansas. Hot Springs, our host city, presented by Seven. Live coverage presented by Maxim, sponsored by Maxim. Uh, championship day going on right now. Let's have a look at our unofficial leaderboard right now and the favorite coming into here. Jeremiah Kendi has lived up to all the predictions there and he is in a uh, commanding position with uh, three hours or so of fishing time, maybe less than three hours of fishing time left. Right, Schroeder 
and Matt Baker are the two battling for second place. Second place is important because Jeremiah Kendi, not an EQ uh, yeah. enrollee, so whoever the top points will go to uh, whoever finishes in second place. So that's a, that's going to be a big deal at the end of the day. Yeah, they always say if you're within the big bass weight going into the final day, you have a shot to win. Everyone was within four pounds coming into the day, but right now as it stands, you know, it's getting down like yeah. only the top six or the top five are within it, you know, and they can one swing of the bat, they can get back in it. But what do you think the big bass, I mean, we, I think we've seen three and a half is the biggest we've seen today. I'd say. I mean, will we see a five? I feel like I we, don't, we gotta I see like a five. Might be one right here. Is this Zach? Yeah, this is Gutramont. Mr. Ten Fourteen himself. I would say a five probably wouldn't wouldn't register very much with him after yesterday. <laughs> no, he's, he's ruined. <laughs> it looked like a th he had a five yesterday. It looked like a three pulling Number in three. There's questions online as well of people asking about fizzing these fish, and you got to remember, at least with forward-facing sonar, they might be over 40 or 50 feet of water, but these fish maybe are in the tops of the timber, only 10 feet under the surface, yeah. 12 feet. They're not necessarily as deep as the the unit says. They're just like Champlain. All those fish were feeding on shad and bait or in bait fish, sort some sort of bait fish, high in the water column. So they may have been over deep water, but they're not accustomed to deep water. Yeah. They they go up and down so much feeding. They're not regulating themselves, or they're regulating themselves, themselves quickly, it seems, but there are some fish getting caught out of, you know, 30, 40, 50 feet this week. Super there, Bassmaster.com has been covering this thing all week long, and if you look through the pictures yesterday, you probably stopped on a picture that looked like this, 10 pounds and 14 ounces from Zach Gutramont. From Chameau, New York. Of course, that is St. Lawrence and Lake Ontario country up there. Man, oh man, that was. And Kung, the day before, caught a right at 10 pounds. Almost pounder. He's 10. from Canada. Yeah, right? right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. Gucci yeah. might have had the big bag with that, 22 pounds. Yeah. And then this guy from California had 19 pounds and change yesterday, Christian Ostrander. Been ate up with bass fish in the last decade, he said, since he was a 15 year old. Turlock, California, South Stockton area there. Little Sacramento little River, San Joaquin River. Not yeah. that much. Man, I'm oh, hitting it real hard. South of Modesto, even. South yeah, Modesto. yeah. I didn't realize it was that close. Remember before the Grateful Dead played trucking on a live recording, they say they loved us in Turlock and we love them for that. Two pounder. It's the first time that's yeah. ever been mentioned on Bass Live. I'll bet, I'll bet, I'll bet ever in anybody. I'm calling that right now. Hey. You know how Scott Martin broke three records at Okeechobee? Suit breaks three it. mentions we've never heard before <laughs> about every single time. <laughs> A deep dive. Ah, a deep dive. Yeah. Man, one of these is going to be a big one. Starting to bite. Got a couple guys who have gotten a limit, a couple guys who have called. Christian's one of those guys that now has more than five fish. He's been able to upgrade some. Kendi obviously catching the most and the biggest. That's a good, good mm. deal to have.
I'm Jeremiah Kendi. Let's get back to our leader right now. Enjoying an almost nine pound, unofficially nine pound lead over the rest of the field. Yeah, I've got uh, what a little over two and a half hours or so, or more fishing time, and I've had a pretty good morning, caught several fish, but man, I ain't got that key fish yet that I need. If I could just get it, I might have a chance. God, one just followed me in. Crap. But I've so far, I feel good about the day. I mean, I've made good decisions. It's been working out. I just, I got to get them a couple more quality fish, you know, over the four pound class. Think I'm right around 15 pounds right now. Something unique to note about Washita as well is Oh, My game not. plan for the afternoon is to go to where I think I can have potential of catching a four pounder. That's where I'm gonna spend my last couple hours for sure. And if I catch it, I catch it. If I don't, I don't, but that's what I'm gonna go do. I think I could go run around and catch some more like two to three pound fish, but they won't do me no good at this point. So we gotta go for it. It's a good problem to have. Yeah. But the, what I was getting at was the dirty water in Washita actually moves. We, we've seen, we see things like water pushed down from the river, water gets sucked into the lake below Lake Hamilton, and it moves these dirty water sections around the lake. So a place for a guy like Jeremiah, he might have not fished an area all week and then know, okay, well that dirty water is about to get here ah. and I can go back in and maybe wind that lipless around or something like that. And other guys are probably gonna see the same thing, but for someone like Jeremiah, that he might be waiting for a certain water color to get into an area to then go attack it instead They're of going gone. in Two different the day before cast. when it was clean and, and potentially <laughs> wow. messing those fish up, you know, on those sweet spots. It's refreshing to see a lipless. We were talking about it with Stetson, and kind of like the spinnerbait was forgotten a couple years yeah. ago. It was came back a little bit more no, more so now. And a lipless is it's a hundred different ways to do it. You know, you can yo-yo yeah. it. You can um, you know snatch it out of grass. You can tick the grass. You can mm -hmm. just straight wind retrieve retrieve it on rocks. Flutter. There's a lot of different things for it. And so it's it's one of those ones where. The options are endless, and so you don't even know how you should fish it without a bunch of trial and error. Some places it seems like it never disappeared. Places like Gunnersville and Rayburn, you know, it's just, it's just the, the go-to coming into this time of year. Four for Logan. I'll we'll take her. Looks like it will be. Four. She gotta go too though. Four. Thank you, God. Don't try and live scoop these trees. Did you say that was four? That was yes. fourth for Keeper Logan? Keeper number okay. four. All right. But one that needed to go. Yeah. Andy Newcomb, Lake of the Ozarks. I have had quite a few bites actually, but you know, I'm having a hard time getting the fish to commit. I've lost a couple. I've missed a bunch. There's a lot where I can't even set the hook. They just hit it and, and spit it out so quick. Um, I expected a tougher day, but it's still frustrating, you know? So we're just gonna keep casting. We still have plenty of time. I'm gonna throw baits that I think are gonna catch big ones and uh, stay in areas that I know big ones are in, and uh, we'll see what happens.
Thanks. Do you know what the money difference is between a tenth and a second or a tenth and a third for, for somebody like Blake Schroeder who's going to move up, you know, six or eight spots on the final day? I have to look at the last event. I think top ten. I mean, I think it's like. Bo, you know, you got like nine grand for. Uh, I just would say for ninth place, and I think second's like ten or another ten grand more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's like 20 grand. It's like oh, two checks. Oh, okay, we're good. Two checks. Two checks. Yeah, two checks. Right on the clock. Which in fishing, it seems for a lot of these stories you hear, these guys, you know, I had to, Rick Clinton had to sell a rifle to get to a classic. He wins the classic. It's like every, every little bit you can get extra Make a couple can get you to the next tournament, and the next really tournament could be your breakthrough. You know what I'm saying? A guy who's like, ah, I got to make a check this event. If you make it, the next event could be the one. So we don't ever want to underestimate really what a couple thousand means to some of these guys. I feel like I can only fall three spots. I mean, three points. I mean, it matters, but does it matter? Because I think I could go throw that wobble head and catch a couple. But I don't know if they're going to be. I haven't caught a big one on it yet, so. Ronnie, I'm looking at the last yep. event from 31st to 45th. We're paying down to 45th now. They all got about four grand. Yep. Eleven dollars short of four grand each. Yep, from thirty-first to forty-fifth. Yeah. So if you're looking at back, do you know the top ten? Oh yeah. <laughs> Martin Just made about that fifty grand. Up. Tucker Smith yeah. twenty for second. Randall Tharp fifteen grand. We got uh, Matt Adams was about thirteen. Okay. Cranford about twelve. And yeah, about so it's eleven for Father Gill. Grand each spot until you get to the top three, and then it's five grand it's jumps, and then thirty grand. Jumps. Yeah. <laughs> Next three, eight to ten, we're about ten grand even. Out to Paul Marks, getting to see his electronics live. Bo, what do you see in there? It's in a lot of grass. Um, I'm assuming he's down at the lower end of the lake. I didn't quite look. Yeah, he's, he's in there. He's been in that yeah, Blakely's lower, region. Blakely's Blakely region. Yeah. So, but you notice if he's in that region, he's away from the timber and just around the grass. That could have had something to do with. You know why he's been catching them so good if he's able to figure out okay i need to be away from the timber but on these good grass lines you're seeing healthy grass too you know this time of year a lot of times the grass will lay down and that can be detrimental to some mm. a grass line that could produce so much it could the grass could actually lay down and uh and be nothing so grass seems to be standing up here which explains why he's been catching them so good some anglers were talking about the way bass, the way bass were related to the grass this week. It wasn't like you'd see them up and around it; that they're like kind of nestled in it. Can mm -hmm. you explain? Like, I guess you're just making bomb casts, hoping they reveal themselves. Right, and that's that's a lot of it. Uh, you can either kind of do two things: you can either cover water and hope to to bring those fish out, throwing something, a winding bait or a jerk bait or you know a big bait to draw those fish out and reveal themselves. Or you can do, it looks like Paul here is, is looking for fish hanging out above the grass and, uh, and trying to target those individual fish instead of really going into search mode and like that one right there, he just threw at. Fifteen feet, that means roughly the grass is probably growing Four feet off the bottom, four it looks like. Feet. Yeah. And Jeremiah was talking about this morning. He was targeting clumps. Would you consider this a clump, or is this this pretty sustained? It could be a I'm, large group of it. You know. I'm going to say this is a grass, a true grass line, and uh, and normally our clumps grow taller. Is the reason I say that is, is our the clumps will grow taller. This is just a sustained kind of stays at the same height. I'm going to say this is a line of grass. And uh, you can tell there's fish out there on the outside edge, like this one right here that looks like you just threw at. Do what? Maybe a little piece of cover. Big dot. Maybe a little old busted up tree. Something Maybe brush. Like like old Did you brush. see it from back there? Yeah. <laughs> 
he was using a jerk bait earlier, but if he's using a spinning rod now, he's just going to be a more of like a Demiki approach. Demiki bait. But... Ideally, when you see a fish within a foot or two of the bottom, where do you want your bait? Because there's some guys, they don't want to put it right on them. Right. They want to stay above them. They want to stay out in front of them. What is it for you that you feel, at least at Washita, with pressured fish? Normally, you want to get it above them, let them notice that bait and show interest. And most of the time, and I noticed some guys look like they were doing this as well, is when those fish initially start to show interest in that bait and start easing up towards it, you want to work it away from them. You don't want them to really look at it, get a good look at it. You'd rather them just be caught up in the pursuit. There's some timber right off the grass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want the you don't want the bait imitator to look too comfortable around too the bass. Comfortable. You don't. Want, right. Hey, whoa! You're the school bully. Stay away exactly. from me. Paul is totally locked in on that for sure. Committed to be. I guess it's a good way to put it. Just changing the way we thought about. You know, you you expect, I always used to say going to a first spot of the day, you drive five minutes, how many fish did I drive over? You know, that's right. in a 50 feet of water, a place I'm not even considering casting. Now, there are opportunities, you know, and it's untapped areas. Let's take a look right now at our Tackle Warehouse EQ update, and there's the man on top. We're looking at him, Paul Marks, based on a terrific top four performance, fourth place performance. Last week, or, or two weeks ago, I should say, at Okeechobee, and now again in the top, well, right in the top five mm. as it stands today, Easton Fothergill. Your roommate. My roommate. In that. Having a magical year, for sure, yeah, headed yeah. to the Classic. Uh, won the bracket competition team of the year. All that. You got a good mix here. A couple former college anglers, a couple young guys in general that didn't do college fishing, a couple middle-aged, you know, the Andy Newcombs and Joe uh, Weibergs of the world that are good in their region in Missouri. And then you've got some former pros looking to make it back to the Classic in the Elite Series knit, knit right there at the bottom, Ishman Road, Dakota Ebear, Clark Ream. And then, I mean, if you went 11 through 20, that would be a great rookie class too. 21 oh, sure. through 30, like it just seems like every group of 10 anglers, nine of those would be great. All right, Bass Master. Have you heard of that? It's a new women's workshop series. Uh, it's going to be uh, hosted by the Bass Master staff along with professional female anglers. It's all about not just building awareness, but advancing the sport of fishing for female persons around the world. And uh, a lot, of, a lot yeah. of a lot of attention being given to this right now. There's a series of workshops, one at the St. John's River coming up in April, Wheeler Lake in Alabama in June, in August, going to be uh, having a workshop up at the St. Lawrence River. Uh, different things taught at these workshops, uh, fishing fundamentals, lure essentials, knots, seasonal patterns, rods and reels. Uh, we're going to discuss industry opportunities, if perhaps some of these women would like to get into the industry. It's a lot, a lot of good opportunities. Bass Master. St. Croix Bass Master opens Lake Washita, Hot Springs, Arkansas, presented by Seven. Maxim is providing our live coverage today. We should appreciate them. What a beautiful spot. We've got some great photography of this gorgeous place here. Tucked in the mountains, great vacation destination for people from around the country, around the world. Take a look at our unofficial leaderboard, and it is a local in charge. Probably the pre-tournament favorite, Jeremiah Kendi, has really gotten it done three days straight here. Super consistent. Uh, has, once again, gotten himself over 15 pounds today. But what a performance two weeks ago at the first stop of the year for St. Croix. Bassmaster opens down at Lake Okeechobee and Scott Martin. Of course, Roland Martins is the place we were going out of. That was a headquarters. So much tradition that family has on that particular body of water. And Scott had to be the favorite there. Yeah, 100% local knowledge factored. But like he mentioned uh, on the water, it's been 33 years since we had been out of Cluiston. And Cluiston means a lot in bass fishing lure and for the Martin family. Bo, how was it going out of Cluiston, a place that you probably grew up seeing footage of, but you maybe had never been out of? Very cool to see that process, especially for how how much of a legendary place Okeechobee is. Oh, it was cool. You could definitely tell the, the Martins had played a huge role in, in Cluiston with the, the marina and all the good stuff that they have there. And it was really, really neat. It was neat to see the community come out and support Scott as well. I mean, he 
had an incredible record-breaking week. Oh and my God. To see that community come out and stand behind the local guy shows a lot about the family. And just, it was a really cool week to watch it unfold. I was glad I could be there on the final day to see it Very, all go down. Yeah, emotional uh, moment there for him and his family. And uh, You were glad to a certain extent. You thought, you know. I thought I was cool until, until. Yeah, <laughs> until well, and, and like everybody thinks that they may have a shot to win, but right. you come back and you're like, I left the dock 14 pounds back, now I lost by 30 right. pounds. I guess it was crazy, the deficit that just, boom, how quick he grew it. 10 anglers left out here today. This is the third day. The second stop of the year, as we mentioned, on Lake Washita. Seven more after this. It's quite a commitment. Getting out there, Andrew Hargrove. Talk about what a big, I mean, nine elites. That's, a, that's, what would pull the trigger for you, Bo? Ah. <sighs> Pull the trigger for the elites. Yeah, but it made you made you say, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm I, I think it was just a, you know, I went in my senior year of high school and fished one division that opens. I just I had a company come on that allowed me to do that, and I was able to go get my feet wet. But I realized pretty quick I didn't have what it took to be there. So being able to look in the mirror and really have that talk with yourself, like we need to get a little bit better. And I went to college fishing and uh, have had a good, a good run in the college oh, fishing yeah. world. And now I was finally felt like I was back to where I needed to be to, to really compete against these guys. Or not back, but I got to where I needed to be to compete against these guys. Now at least I feel like if I make it anyways, I'm not gonna get my, my lunch taken by the Elite Series guys. So, <laughs> you know, if I'd have made it back then, it, there's no doubt I wouldn't have had what it took to compete against those guys. And now I feel like I'm fishing good enough to, to be there. You got some great reinforcement. Your very first event, that's that's valuable there. Oh yeah, and that that yeah. helps in the mental side of things as well. You know, when you have a, a a tournament and a place you've never been in, you have a top ten finish right out of the gate. It helps with you mentally, lets you know, okay, I do have what it takes to compete with these guys. I mean, I had goosebumps when I was taking off in between Scott Martin, Brandon McMillan was in that group, mm -hmm. Easton Fothergill, my roommate, right next to me. I mean, I was in the mix of really really good anglers and. I was like, okay, I think I got what it takes to be here with these guys. You've had to deal with adversity through college as well. You can't slip a single hour, it seems, there. Right. But I believe in your win at Norfolk, you and Jake Peck mm -hmm. getting that victory a couple years ago. You guys went for a, a few hours that day without a keeper or without any substantial size, yet you come back and then you end up winning that event on the final day. <laughs> uh, so that taught you quite a bit as well mentally, not just the getting better skills wise, but mentally preparing for the pressures that no the top doubt. 10 will do. And, I, and I've talked about this before, but my mental game probably when I was in high school was way different than, than where I'm at now. And college fishing definitely helped me shape that. You know, a lot of this game is, is in between your ears. You know, oh, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a mental game. So to be able to have a strong mental uh, game in, in, in that sense is very, very much an advantage. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at college anglers in the field here. Trevor McKinney, Tristan McCormick. Boy, this is the, this is the all star yeah, list. This is here. the top, the, the cream that rose to the top. Absolutely couple, yeah, all these bracket champions. I think the only one of the last five years not there is Louis Minetti from two years ago. But Easton, the representative, the honor to be able to fish the Opens as the college representative in a season. You can't, you don't want to underestimate that. And to come out of the gates in your first event, oh get a top 10, and then catch a 9-1 on the final day. Oh my God. Big time performance for him and his story. You were you were one of his you know schoolmates, not necessarily mm -hmm. teammate, but schoolmate. What he went through last year with team of the year, him and Nick winning team of the year, and then at the championship when they get a top five, he starts to have those those headaches, those those issues, and then ends up that he has to have brain surgery and then gets cleared a couple of days before the bracket. What was that like as a friend and a I mean, teammate? Like, you don't, the uncertainty. We, we lived together. Me, Easton, and uh, Nick Dumkey all lived together in, in a house. And when that happened, it kind of, myself and Nick had to sit down just like, we need to 
be on top of ourselves, you know. And it's not that we're super unhealthy, but Easton had those that headache come in and all that, and we kind of just college guys just uh, you know take some Advil, dehydration, and dehydration, yeah. long yeah. week at at the Pickwick National Championship, <laughs> and then after a while it started to act more serious, and we got him into the hospital and he got scanned and that happened, and figured out that he had a mass and. It was it was eye opening. It was definitely eye opening, and then stressful again in the sense that now he had the bracket coming up, and we had to everything just had to come together right, and and it did luckily, and went on to win that. So it was really really cool to see that story unfold, as well as be a part of it in a sense, and have to see it firsthand. Coming from Minnesota, does he talk much about Leech Lake or? He does. I think he's a little excited about that. Is one. he? Okay. I'm excited Are you? about that. I'm very excited <laughs> yeah. about it. He's I think that's roommate. the most excited one. Randall Tharp said he was excited about it. A lot of guys said they were. I'm really looking forward personally to the small mouse swing yeah. and more than anything. Well, explain how you're telling me, I talked to Easton and you, that you know you kind of got the southeast part of the U.S. covered and he's kind of got the northern smallmouth fishing covered and you guys are kind of sharing info this year. No doubt. I mean, being roommates, you, you work together, you want to see each other do good. And, and last summer, I actually went, I, I told Easton, I said, man, there's one thing I don't know, and it's smallmouth. And it's just killing me that I don't understand smallmouth fishing. He said, come up to Minnesota. You got a mm. place to stay as long as you want, and I'll teach you. And I drove up to Minnesota, spent the whole month of July up there. Wow. And I mean, I did a lot of fishing on my own, learning on my own, but I had multiple days where I spent in the boat with Easton and, and I sat in the back with my notebook in my hand and just took notes, asked questions and let him teach me what I needed to know. So to have that friendship built through college fishing yeah. and you know to see that, that might be what one of these days puts me in the elites is a small mouth tournament I can go, Easton taught me I needed to be doing this and that could be a difference between making it in this game and yeah, not. So really point. thankful for him to shine some light on something that wasn't, you know, necessarily my forte. Well, I mean, it's even the, the opposite, what, what the northern folks learn when they come south. That's why he mm -hmm. chose the University of Montevallo in Alabama from being, being from Minnesota. I wanted to get a different perspective on the world. And I remember in a college championship in the heat of the summer, school and fish galore and the Swanson brothers from Bemidji State up there in Minnesota mm -hmm said that they had no idea in practice when they saw him like what was going on like you don't have they don't <laughs> school like that right. up north and so they were like what do we throw at you know like and they're mm -hmm. just trying to figure it out and then they end up getting a top 10 in the college championship off schooling fish and it was their first week doing there so it was something brand new they got to learn just fishing a different region from where you're from Gonna say, plus you had 25 days without 100 degree temperatures down. That was that was the best yeah. part. <laughs> now Schroeder has moved into second place with 12-2, the three pounder. He's 614 back at Kendi now. He did 19 pounds today to get about the same weight that Kendi has. And you notice Schroeder's fish in dirty, shallow water, and like we talked about earlier with the dirty water moving uh, with the currents in this lake. It's not stout current, but it does move in that dirty water, the sections down the river and things like that. He could be getting into an area that he hasn't even tapped into yet and the potential for a big stretch of bank or something that produces a lot could happen just because some dirty water might have moved in and that might be where he is now. Do they generate at the Blakely Dam or is that they for, do. they do they there? Do at okay. The Blakely okay. Dam. And the big thing is keeping the lake below Lake Hamilton at, yeah. a, at a consistent yeah. level. Tell a certain, what, what's the time, Memorial Day or before that? Or? They drop it, I think so. I think, I think, it, I think you're right. Mm. Comes back up. So they're managing that lake and it's affecting Lake Washita, not in a bad way, but it just, it affects the water level in, in Lake Washita a lot. Yeah.
Sorry, guys, lost you for a second there. Yeah, when I when I was driving to the weigh-ins each day, you drive over Hamilton to get to the takeoff for Wash Washita. You see how low it is because that's the standard. You know, mm -hmm. it may look big, but with how narrow, like it's right. it's much smaller, so they can't take as much. So, how do you read the Hamilton output that they're sending to Catherine? to know how much is actually leaving Washita, you know what I'm saying? Like they're right. probably, what's coming out of Washita is just going straight through Hamilton, none of it's right. staying. And so it's, it's tough to read multiple lakes like that to see what's coming in, what's going out. And then there's lots of runoff too in Lake Washita as well. I mean, lots of mountain ranges, mm -hmm. a oh, little yeah. bit of rain goes a long way and there's a lot of fluctuation that goes on in, with Lake Washita in general. I said it was notorious. It seemed like a lot of Arkansans didn't like when you'd have a one day BFL or something at Washita in January or February because as we, hold on just a second, Blake Schroeder is hooked up. Ooh, good one. Another dig. Just grinding that thing down there on the bottom, man. I mean, just letting that rod tip just do the work. Another decent one. Got some work to do, but that's a start right there for sure. Up to 12 2 on the day, 6 14 back of Kendi. Lake Schroeder working on that uh, deficit, and it's a it's a big one. But uh, hey, a little at a time, you never know what he might be able to get done in the last hour and a half of fishing here. Jeremiah Kendi, though, still firmly established on top of that leaderboard. Christian Ostrander and, uh, gained some ground in the past couple of hours, to be sure. And all the rest of our 10 anglers out there on Championship Saturday, Lake Washita. What a place. We got more fishing on the way. St. Croix Bassmaster opens. The Lake Washita event is number two of nine in our EQ schedule this year. Maxim responsible for our live coverage today, and we do appreciate that. Some beautiful scenes from around beautiful Lake Washita here in this mountain range, western Arkansas. Beautiful spot, great for boating, great for camping, et cetera. A lot of summer camps take place on Lake Washita. People from all over the state and around the southwest coming to summer camps here, kids in, in large part. It's just a, a well-known, much-loved place and loved by fishermen for sure. We've got 10 of them have been loving it this week because they're still competing here today. Our championship Saturday crew. One of them's gonna gain access to the world championship, the Bass Pro Shops Bassmaster Classic coming from Lake Ray Roberts in 2025 and Fort Worth. Could be Jeremiah Kendi. I reckon that's the right decision. Or, that's the one I went with. <laughs> Can't take it back, right? Yeah, I mean, you gotta, gotta make a choice and see what happens. That's right. This is the best option I got in my mind to catch a good one, so here I am. High noon, I get the feeling it's still cold out there, Bo. It looks like it's still <laughs> a little bit chilly. We're, we're wrapped up still. It's about 40 degrees now, Tommy. Mm. Sun probably helps and not the, yeah. as high of winds as they were blowing yesterday at the weigh-in. It, it's getting a little chilly in here, too. I don't know if someone left the door open for a minute. I don't know. It's like at least like 65 in here now. We'll look into that, Ronnie, and see what's we'll going on here. Check. No complaining Check in here. On that. <laughs> I just keep, I give Kyle weather updates from here like he gives us weather updates from the water, you know. I'm sure he's loving that. <laughs> There's your top five across the bottom there. Blake Schroeder of Texas, Christian Ostrander from California. Matt Baker, another Arkansas angler, in fourth place. 
Got a Canadian angler in the field. Evan come. Not just a whole lot of wind, is there? There's enough, though, plenty to catch them. Andrew Hargrove, been a little while since his last keeper. Only five of the ten had limits. He's stuck Big. on two. Ain't that big. But I will take it. Spot. Come here. Ah. Come here. Gosh. That was ugly. Bigger than most spots we've seen. Most spots That's we've right. seen, you gotta measure them. No one's Avoiding the board, probably. Two more bites. Two more bites and I'll be happy. Let's put a cold tag on him. I'm probably gonna have to fizz him in a minute. There's some fizzing going on. Andrew has a tendency to be a little bit negative, not, not in a bad way, but just down on himself. I checked in yesterday after he had 19 on day one. I said, how'd you do today? And he said, not good. He said, I got 12, 13 pounds. And I was like, 12, 13 pounds is not it's good enough. Tough, man. Actually, it's you're going to be fishing tough. tomorrow. What are you talking about? He led and for grinding, almost the whole and way as well. And grinding. Um, I think if I can get five, I may not win, but it'll, it'll put me up there. Um, it'll, I think it'll put me up there. Um, it's been tough on me today. Had a lot of fish. Just look at it and um, not seeing near as many fish as I have the, the last two days. Um, so any anyone that I see, I gotta make it count, put it on their head, and uh, even then, they still might not bite, so. Started third, fell down, now he's back up to fourth with three fish. Yes, sir. It's been a grind. It has been a grind. I've only had, a, I guess, four bites today. Um, and one of them I lost. It was a big one this morning and um, just trying to, trying to grind it out and trying to get five, you know, five keepers. And um, I don't know that five keepers would allow me to win or anything like that, but it would uh, it'd make me feel better anyway. Um, like I said, it's just, it's been tough. Had a lot of fish just follow and not eat and um, not, not seeing near as many fish as the last two days, but I don't know. We just, uh, I got one one big one, one decent one, and one little one, but uh, like I said, if I can get five, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd feel accomplished for the day anyway. Um, but at the same time, I mean, we're fishing on championship Saturday. Um, got to be live on FS1 and, uh, can't complain. So we're gonna keep grinding away and try to get two more bites, get them in the boat. Um, most of it, I mean, it's just a big point or the flats up here, like I said, and there's some hydrilla and stuff like that, but there's brush piles out here and the deeper stuff. That last fish came 
on that far brush pile, it's 70 feet out there. There's one on the bottom actually swimming, but um, is there a time, Bo, when it's a timber deal versus a brush pile deal? One of the guys was talking about he actually felt like he found new, newly, plant, newly planted well, brush piles because he was catching like fresh cedar on his bait when he'd get hung up. And so, when is it a timber versus a brush pile deal at Washita? I think you just see it shine on, and it's a daily, day-to-day -day type of thing. You see, you know, there's days when the grass really shines. There's days when brush piles really shine. There's days when the timber really shines. And it just, it's a day-to-day -day thing. I mean, there's really no rhyme or reason to any of it. Uh, I think the cloudy conditions definitely help for the, the grass bite guys. And I think the sunshine really helps for the brush pile guys. So you kind of see it. I'm sure a lot of the guys that came into this tournament didn't have the local knowledge to really, you know, go to playing it by ear of the weather. But that can help too in the sense of they're just gonna go do what feels right. And, and uh, so it's not surprising at all to see guys not from around here doing really well because like we've talked about sometimes it's just best not to know too much and then you can just go fish with an open mindset just completely off your gut and based on what you saw in practice but there was some new brush piles planted there I, I caught when the Corps of Engineers went out the day before official practice and and dropped a bunch of fresh uh -huh. brush piles. How do you feel? So let's just say if there's we're in a we're in a decent sized room here. If if this is the end of a Lake point so or the bass. ledge and there's four or five so old brush piles stuff. and they plant one or Not two in there bass. within the day that those fish get, you know, they transition over to it, or does it take two or three days to move a, a fish a hundred yards to the new brush or for them to be like, that's a that's my new spot, you know what I'm saying? I've always felt like a week right is really a realistic a plan, but there's though. definitely fish. I mean, there's so many roaming fish in Lake yeah. Washtenaw, they could just Stripes. run across it and set up shop, so to speak. And, it, and every single type of tree that you drop will yeah. decay or mm -hmm. erode differently More and put off different things species. in the water. And right here. Guys like Paul at Lanier, they got it down to a science on what kind of tree and, you oh, know, yeah. and how deep or... If I if I drop this kind of tree on my buddy's favorite spot, it's gonna mess it up, you know, like or whatever, <laughs> whatever it is. I know it. Normally, with the northwest wind, there's always a butt here. This lake is chock full of crappie. I'd like to have it. I mean. During practice and stuff. And catch it. I bet I caught it. And nearly every one of them was over two pounds. They were giants. They're giants, I mean. Another little tidbit of local knowledge from Jeremiah. With the, you heard him say, what he said, normally on a northwest wind, there's always a bite to be had here pretty impressive to have it down to yeah. a wind direction. Big strap on a waxing gibbous moon that's really yeah. good. You know? <laughs> when a crow flies over that long pine tree over there, <laughs> yeah. one will fire over here on the stump. Oh, dog it. That's not good. Mm. Right where he's supposed to be, too. Dad gum it. Still impressive, Jeremiah, for for being able to call a shot. Right. Even though it didn't capitalize on it. It's... It is hard to swallow though when you're like, I'm gonna that. save that oh. spot till 12:15. I'm gonna go over there and make that one cast, and you do, and you you lose that fish, right. or you're like, ah, oh, man, I knew it. I was yeah. smarter than the rest, and I it didn't work out. Kind of reminds me how Will Davis played Lay Lake. He's mm -hmm. picking his spots. And there's a level of strategy too, you know. Jeremiah, I'm sure, had spots that he thought he could catch good ones off of, but didn't want to take away from He's something he could kicking. use the next day, know, you know, buddy. catch a three pounder that might not help. On days one and two, and then 
save it for the final day when he might need it a little bit more. Did you hear, I, I was at the end of the dock, he was the first boat to check in. And I noticed, hey, that's the guy who's been leading on Bass Track. Well, I interview him first and then tell him, then you're leading on Bass Track, because we can tell him well, after he checks in. Once they in. check in. Yeah, he was, he was kind of happy with I'd that. I'd be stuck on him. Suits, you ever told somebody you, they won the tournament before it was official? Oh, yeah, all the time. <laughs> He never stopped. Hey, man, I'm Mike Sukon with Bassmaster. You won the tournament. You want to talk? <laughs> Big joker. Called somebody on the water when they won AOI, though, and then I hear later he wasn't supposed to be using a phone. And I'm like, what? They were fizzing. Yeah, if you're wondering how these anglers who are catching them in deeper, deeper water and those fish aren't high in the water column, how they're relieving the air, air bladder pressure, which whether this was catch and release, whether you, once you catch those fish, they will need that relief somehow. Yeah. So while they're in the live well, if you go back, there's a couple videos on Bassmaster.com and instructionals. You go past the fin just a little bit, time it up with the dorsal, four scales back, and if you slide underneath the scale, and, and puncture straight through and let some air bubbles come out, you'll be able to deflate that air bladder which pushes on its internal organs and creates barotrauma. And so folks like Barb Elliott and our BASS conservation director, Gene Gilliland, have been vigilant in teaching Elite Series pros so they can teach the next generation. And they do a great job. I mean, we see college guys all the oh, time yeah. in the tournaments and these guys are just as good at handling those fish and, and you know, fish care is so important, as like you said, Ronnie, for setting up the next generation so they have the uh, the fish to enjoy. Yeah, we'll say. I mean, you've we've talked documented it, Tommy, on the the cast from the "Don't Kill Your Catch" initiative, five fish limits. You know, in, in putting penalties on dead fish so there's decentivizing. You know, treatment of fish poorly. And then the fizzing thing. There have been pros, long time pros, and within the last five years who have been told and learned about fizzing, that now we haven't even gone through a full generation who know how to do it. And so with the technology and the deep water fish getting caught, this next group will keep yep. those fish A-OK. -okay. Clock is ticking away. Championship Saturday here, St. Croix Bassmaster Open. Lake Washita, 10 anglers all chasing one man. Jeremiah Kendi, of course, in about four days, starting next Thursday, the Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite starts the Bassmaster Elite season for 2024. Fantastic Toledo Bend Reservoir, so much history there, so many incredible tournaments, and certainly on an upswing by all accounts. And we cannot wait to get there. Begins February 22nd, goes through the 25th. See it right here on Bassmaster.com. Uh, getting towards the end of the day, the uh, the ultimate day of the second stop of the year for the St. Croix Bassmaster Opens. This one at Lake Washita, presented by Seven Reels. Jeremiah Kendi hanging on to that lead there. Got it just under seven pounds. Blake Schroeder, his nearest competition, Texas angler and Christian Ostrander. Right behind him, along with Andrew Hargrove. So two Texas anglers, Californian and a local. They're in the top four as it stands right now. We take you down Grand Avenue, I believe it is. Hot, Hot Springs, Arkansas, a great resort town. Visit Hot Springs is our host here, and we do appreciate all their efforts and uh, Good hospitality. To be back. Good to be back. Yeah, it's great to be back since 2002. It's been since the Bassmasters has been to a wonderful Lake Washita. What a great test for some of the best anglers in the business. Bo, what has been your interactions with Jeremiah Kendrick? He's a, just a, a, one of those local guys that's always around. Great guy. You know, I've always enjoyed competing against him, and uh, he's just always been one of those you have to watch out for. Obviously, today he's shining his local knowledge on all of us and, and giving us an opportunity to really go into the mindset of, or look into the mindset of Jeremiah and 
and see why he makes so much money on the local level, is so successful and has been for so many years and we're able to get these little tidbits and see exactly why he is as good as he is. And it's cool to see people who work so hard, maybe a nine to five job, they come out there and fish as hard as they can on Saturdays when they get the opportunity or they prepare for tournaments and they use all of that knowledge in a big moment like this and be able to do it. Matt Airy, Bassmaster Elite Series Pro, texted me and said, cool story about Jeremiah, I fished with him when I was a co-angler at Lake Murray in 2005 and 2006 uh, when Matt was a co-angler. And he was on the Land of Lakes team at the time. He was a great fisherman and a good dude. And I was wondering whatever happened to him. And it's great to see him on Fox Sports 1 in the, this morning dominating on his home lake. You know, yeah, I think you're right, Bo. I think, I think we all have learned stuff from, exactly. from him about wind, about angles, about wh what places come, come, all, come on at what time of day. It's been, exactly. it's been really educational. He's a, he's a true master up here. No doubt. No doubt. He's utilized lipless crankbait for most of today. If you're just joining us on all of our streaming platforms, he's used that red, red lipless, the, the one knocker, as Stetson pointed out earlier. Or uh, not him, Matt Baker had the one knocker. He might be as well, but a lipless crankbait in the crawfish pattern. Earlier today, he was using clumps of grass and some rock points. And then today, this afternoon, once he got his limit, that sun came out, beating down on some of those shallower pockets. And right in the guts of those, he was able to catch a couple three pounders to upgrade to around 15, what he's got right now. Back live with Jeremiah Kendi. He's fished 10 opens. The last one was here in 2002. He's cast in four of them on Shreveport and Jasper and Osage Beach, Beach and uh, Kimberling City. About 5,500 in bass earnings. He's going to make times that 10. times 10. Yeah, <laughs> about times 10. With another another uh, twenty percent kick in their minimum for the classic, we were talking about that last Going night. Up at the classic, you win almost fifty grand this week. I'll reinvest four thousand in to fish the last two of the division to to make ten next year at Ray Roberts minimum. It's a good, it's a good bonus. return on it's investment. A favorable yeah. arithmetic. Yeah. Well, he's got to fish the next two opens in this yeah. division, though, and he's he was. Asking yesterday at the uh, trailer how to enter him. Yeah. And uh, I think Hank was messing with it. Nope, full up. Myth. Yeah, <laughs> what he said. I'll get you on the way. Sure, we're list. close for today. <laughs> yeah. But, but with this, each division's different. Yes, we have 165 anglers fishing all nine opens, but each division's going to have you know, a certain number to get to that 225. We won't go over 225. We were at 223 or 224 at the first open, which is the here. division yeah. one. We're, yeah, right at 200. So 25 spots, you know, in theory for, for division two. They're asking him, him a question. Well, the water temperature right now is 46 and a half to 47. And right now I'm fishing a little high spot with some grass on it. It's got a deep channel right on the back side of it. And I'm kind of kind of in a saddle right now, throwing out to the high spot. Just trying to catch a big, and it's just a good spot for big ones to sit on. Go from one local to another. Seems like Matt's made his way towards a gut or a back end of a ditch in this pocket. Matt, just a few ounces behind second place, Blake Schroeder. Matt started the day in second.
some eggs. Got him. Hooks all in the jacket. Oh, that's a hard fought five there. Found three quarters, probably. What are you doing? Limit for Baker means there are six of our ten with a limit. Now, on day one, we had 141 out of 199 boats have a limit, Ronnie. The, I think the average fish was about two pounds, seven ounces. Day two, six less limits, and it went down about two yeah, ounces, no, two five. There's the a lot of fish, fish. here. Which three, I think a lot of people expected the weights to go up on day two, but the weight bar was set pretty high for uh, the conditions on day one. I think it was like 11 pounds and some ounces was a hundredth place. That's <laughs> <laughs> not a lot of room for error. And tight as well. There's lots of lots of close weights. Myself and Easton Father were breaking it down and there was like a hundredth might have been Matt Baker hooked up again. Hundreds might have been like 11 and a half or whatever you say, heavy 11 and like 12 and a half would move you up. Yeah, 30 spots. 20, yeah, 20 yeah. spots. Crazy. It's going to be close on that one. Oh, no, it shouldn't, shouldn't be. I thought it said a pound eight. It's yeah, I did too. Pound I even. Yeah. just changed it to the oh, okay. it's now 1 0. Oh. Er. I, I still, there's no way we don't have a five pounder today. And whoever, if someone catches a five, if Kendy does it, he's going to run away with it. If someone else below, you know, you've got from second. At 614 back to Andy Newcomb, ninth, 12 1 back. That's a five pounder and, and a couple ounces. Separating, you know, ninth to second. I like the way Blake and Christian are fishing. Been able to cover a lot of water today, both of them, and mixing in a lot of different baits. But bladed jig's been one for Blake that he's leaned on a little more than others, and Christian's been using a spinner bait, been using a crank bait at times. Kind of looks back on what we were talking about earlier, guys picking their strengths and running with it. You know, you can tell Blake and Christian both like shallow water fishing, it seems to be, and, and or at least that's what they felt like they could do. And, you know, you look at Christian, I don't think he has a spinning rod that I can tell on the front deck. Uh, if Blake has one, it's Still, man. not many of them and <laughs> man he is just all in on on what they're doing both of them are all in on really what they're not doing digging it up here today yeah it was good but i am not digging it christian must have just made a move to that new area and didn't necessarily you know like you were saying the water's the water's changing so what it looked like on a day one or a day two may not be what it looks like on day three see baker just Took over second place. Now they're tied. Baker and Schroeder. Yeah. Virtual tie. And Hargrove doesn't have a limit, correct? No. Nope. Nope. So. He's the only one. All six guys that have limits. Um, are in the top seven. He's the only one that's in there that's not not limit yet. So that's dangerous in a yeah. sense that I mean he catches two more good fish and can he's, make a much bigger jump because he's, he's not culling. He's only going up. He's eight and a half back. He's got eight, so he needs sixteen and a half. He started a pound yeah, and a half back. Yeah. If 
you know, I'm Kenny's not acted I almost messed way. up and said that's simple, but you know, like <laughs> I see the path. I see the path that he could do to get to that. He's got a five lot and of a half and a three. I mean, come on, right? He'll be done. One out of ten, Suge. Okay, why not? What are the odds from this lake that you get two lunkers, a 914 and a 1014? You know, a 1014 from Zach Gutierrez, he was like 124th, 22 pound bag. Yeah, nine pounds, pounds and change. Yeah. yeah, right. That is after day one. Well, I'm going to leave Arkansas <laughs> out of the running for the Elite Series. And then you're actually leaving a few days later, like, wow, I got ninth place or 10th place. <laughs> Man. Man, I'm still in it, you know, and that's the, that's the, the deal going into the next one is some people Least. left here thinking that's it's outside shot. They have to get a top ten next week. But if you got one this week, you're I'm still in it. I'll start bad on day one. Then a 114 point increase. Oh no doubt. You'll be very happy with your week. Let alone catching your personal best and knowing that half the EQ attention. field doesn't have 114 points yet. Like you right. you made that up in a day. And after two events, there's some people who you get a hundredth or 150th. And Kindy has not put it away with 15 pounds on Bass Track. The other guys were within, you know, limits that they've caught this week of catching them. One of the guys still without a limit, Logan Johnson, he's still kind of in the same boat as Andrew Hargrove, two solid fish today and um, without a limit. Lots of room to go. Right here off this brush pile. This brush pile's been good to me all tournament, so I can see a couple in there swimming around in it. Just trying to get them to eat. So I got a little bit of time. I can tell you this much, I hadn't warmed up very much today. Logan Johnson, as it stands now, 13th in the points race. Made the top 25 last year as far as EQ Series points went. Let's see if the Alabama Angler could get it done this year. Make it to the Bassmaster Elite Series. 
time. You saw about 32 of those right there on the drive back last night. I was a little worried my truck was going to look different on the way back. Ooh, yeah. They were waiting. Mm. They're just sightseeing. <laughs> Don't forget the weigh-in coming up 345 Eastern Time right here on Bassmaster.com. Going to find out what that final points tally is for the second stop in the St. Croix Bassmaster Opens presented by Seven. Also find out who uh, punches their ticket potentially to the Bass Pro Shops Bassmaster Classic. We'll be right back. St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Lake Washita presented by Seven. Sponsored by Toyota. By Nitro Boats. By Dakota Lithium. And by Hummingbird. Great to have all y'all with us today on Bassmaster Live. It's been a big Saturday for us. A, a new rededication to the Bassmaster Opens. We're covering all nine of them. Final day this year. That is indeed going to be a pleasure. We get a look at the future of bass fishing on so, so many levels here. And it is always educational and uh, great to have had Bo Browning with Bo. Great job today okay, helping okay. us break down this, this lake you know so well. And congratulations on your fantastic start to the year down at Okeechobee. And uh, man, next stop, Santee Cooper for you. Thank you. Thank you. It's always a joy being, being here, being with you guys, getting to watch, you know, or be a part of what I've watched so many times. You know, it's, it's, a, it's an awesome feeling to get to be here and commentate. And like I said, learning things on my home lake. I always like to learn. Yeah. And this is a great opportunity right here. Doing a great job, absolutely. You. You, you've acquitted yourself well today, I'll put Thank it that so way. Much. I did say to him at the day one way, and I said, you're doing real, real well. If you don't make the top 10, would you mind jumping in and, and doing some commentary with us in the afternoon on Saturday? And he said, I would definitely. And then yesterday at the way, and I was like, hey, I'm sorry you didn't make it. But like, can you still come? And he's like, yeah, I'll come. So it's great to have Bo here. Uh, how many of the nine lakes for the Opens this year have you ever been to? With the Logan Martin, you follow Oklahoma, Santee, you know, coming up in the next three? Logan Martin and here, I think we're the only two that I've been to. I've been in the region of Leech Lake. I'm, I'm looking forward to that one in the sense they all seem to kind of fish similar. And my roommate, Easton Father Gill, is from up there, so I'm sure he's going to point me in a little bit of a direction going into it. But, uh, but really, Logan Martin and Washtenaw were the only two. I'm, I'm looking forward to all of them, but those are the only two that I had something to really go off of. But like we talked about, Okeechobee I'd never seen before and did good there. So getting back in that swing of things, doing your homework, watching Bass Lives, things like that, I'm ready to get back into that mindset. It was weird coming into this one without all the homework, the stuff on oh, your phone, yeah. the pictures, things of that nature to, to go off of. Well, how, how happy Easton was to be at Leech Lake. I'm surprised he didn't tell Bo to go there. Maybe he's holding back from Bo a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah, want well, you to I mean, know yeah, how I mean, good this can, place you is. You can be friends, but you got to <laughs> look out for number one a little yeah, bit. Exactly. That's right. That's exactly so. Well, great stuff, Bo. Good stuff. What, if any, any of these spots that, we, that we're headed to this year give you a little little twinge of anxiety, maybe a little uncertainty? Hartwell, believe it or not. The only Hartwell. One. I, I miss that I have been there before, and, and, and uh, it's just a little bit outside of my... I don't know. I've never really caught them there, but I'm going to make sure going into that one that I have a lot of a lot of things prepared. As we watch some of the highlights from today, especially with Jeremiah Kendi, our leader here. Those herring lakes, you, you feel you feel like you've sort of dialed into those? I feel like I've learned a lot about fishing for big spots here on Lake Washita. I need to need to dial in how they relate to herring, and I feel like there's a similarity between the two. So I'm going to spend a lot of time in the off season, you know, in the summer months. I say off season, but when I'm home yeah. here, to really, really fish for spotted bass on Lake Washita, as well as probably go and pre-practice for Lake Hartwell and just and get a feel lay of the land and really make sure that I'm prepared going into that. That has been a show today from Jeremiah Kendi. Everyone mm -hmm. expected that's what could happen on this day. He's got the biggest bass of the day. He's got uh, the biggest limit of the day, and of course he has the uh, the commanding lead with not a whole lot of fishing time left in this championship Saturday. So, Bo, did you see any pieces of the puzzle you missed? Oh, most definitely. I mean, the whole live scope forward facing sonar thing as a whole, <laughs> uh, I kind of, I, I just veered away from it with the with the striped bass that we see a lot. I just, I didn't want to dive off into that. And I, you can see the guys that came into it that mm -hmm. prefer that way of fishing, style of fishing, just went with it all in. I know. Uh, Easton Fothergill was one that just completely went all in in practice. He was going to scope forward-facing sonar fish the entire time. 
and it worked out, you know, and, and for a guy like myself, I didn't want to dive off into that. I felt like I could just not lay up, but play it safe by fishing shallow and, uh, and get a good finish, good points. But it was, uh, it was unique to see, to say the least. And I feel like guys on the local level are, are going to pay attention to that and start applying that more. Three different days, three different uh, weather yeah. situations exactly. here during the course of this tournament. Welcome and then to these Arkansas. guys, hats off to them for dealing with all of that, for sure. Welcome to Arkansas. As yeah. We see Jeremiah close to the bank, but far off of the, I guess, the main the main bank. He's on a, out in a cluster of islands right now, it looks like, from the map. Um, but, Bo, to see someone who's put in a bunch of time, it's pretty impressive to see Jeremiah and Matt Baker. You always hope, I said this about Will Davis, you're a rookie on the Elite Series, you come to your home lake, I would love to be able to beat, you know, the best of the best. I'd love to beat, you know, Kobe Bryant, LeBron, you know, in mm -hmm. basketball, my home place. And to see they Will fish? get to do it, and then all of a sudden you see Jeremiah and Matt Baker rise to the top at their home lake, it's gotta be cool. It's good, you know, it's good to see. There's certain guys, uh, you know, EQ, EQ guys that don't like to see local guys coming in and getting in their tournament, you know. And But it's cool to see a guy like Jeremiah, this is his chance to dance with the big dogs, if that makes sense. And to see him shine is really, really neat. And good guys, you know, doing well, just always you know, enjoy it. Enjoy seeing that. But and you kind of, you kind of pulling for him to, you know, you know make everything to fall into place overall, so he can go to the right, classic. Should he right. win this one here? You want it's to see a huge him opportunity. the ultimate stage. Exactly, you know? it's a huge opportunity. Uh, well, their chance to today. dance with, with the guys that they've grown up watching, just like all the rest of us. I thought it was the local guys didn't like the pros entering their tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's the funny misconception because the pros are. The ones who spend the least time on their local lakes because they're traveling around the country right. and now it's like you guys are well prepared it is probably hard to f not fish for two or three weeks leading up to the tournament right. like you're for the off limits portion and the fact that two or three weeks before this tournament it was seven degrees the entire week with ice exactly. and snow probably i don't know how much it may freeze over but I guarantee you some of the backs of the creeks might freeze over no oh, definitely and, was, you know if Grand Lake froze a little bit in Wolf Creek sure. some of those Washita run-in creeks <clears throat> no doubt would, would stay you know unfrozen but some of the stagnant ones would wish we could pull up right there again do what we did earlier <laughs> <laughs> I think Jeremiah has a good sense that he may have gotten the job done today. I think so. He, he was all business before we got started today, and he is he is like they loosened up considerably. I guarantee you. And he's probably realized that it's fishing a little tougher today too. And yeah. We need Bowman, who was out there with him earlier, just to be like. Matt's got 22, and just keep him going. You know, he, we need a little bit, a little bit of fire out of Jeremiah this last hour. Oh, well, nobody deserves that. Really. <laughs> Haven't checked in with Evan Kung in a while. Our Canadian competitor here in the championship day. Well, I'm just cruising around here. Looking at all the standing timber, trying to see if there's any bass around. This time of day is usually tough. The fish, I think, hide on the bottom, and the bait hides on the bottom, and it's it's very tough to see them. And then when you do see one, they're pretty hard to catch. But we're hoping, hoping we can trick one. This is right around where I caught my 10 pounder the first day. So hopefully there's another one hiding around here. We need one of those today. His five today are two and a half pounds less than his single big fish. But if he duplicates that weight with one fish here, he's in the lead suit. Yeah. I 
I am correct on that bow, that circle in the top right, it was showing where his cone was pointed. And I guess you, if you have multiple transducers, you can select it on that back graph to, to be able to see right. where you're doing it. But interesting use of the technology for sure. Probably, man, you could see so many crankbaits stuck to the standing timber that you could be like, that tree's got five crankbaits on it. I need to go, you know, chop that one down and take some. Help them out on their next next trip. They don't have to cast and get stuck to it. They'll cast past it. Really, the question was coming into this one was, with the local anglers in the tournament, what's going to happen when you take an umbrella rig out of the equation? Because mm -hmm. a lot of these local guys live and die by the umbrella oh. rig. So taking that out of the, the game and, and making them fish with more traditional lures, and it was interesting to see the guys that really shine, like Jeremiah and Matt Baker. I know Matt Baker especially is a big... Jeremiah's right in his element with throwing a lipless crankbait. I mean, he's been known for that for years, but Matt Baker was one of those guys that was really, really good with an Alabama rig, so it was kind of interesting to see well, him adjust and pick up things like a jerk bait and, and, and you know, do some forward-facing sonar fishing without that umbrella rig in play, and obviously has caught him well good enough to be here on the final day and, and show that he's a lot more diverse than the cheater rig, as everybody yeah. likes to call <laughs> it. There's like four or five of them sitting on top of the grass right there. What was the excitement level for people that you've been around on the opens for the first few weeks or people who are, you know, you've met at restaurants and talked about it, the excitement having live. That was something that we've been trying to do is have all nine live, having three the last few years. We were honestly during COVID 2020, when we started doing opens live, boat to boat, then we put them in the boat and now we're doing all nine. Was there a, like a buzz excitement that, hey, this platform is gonna be now available for all nine? Oh, definitely. You know, Bass does a great job in general of, of setting up a platform for, for guys on this level to really push their brand, start their name, and, and, and get in front of the faces of potential sponsors, support their sponsors, and, uh, and the fans, you know. So when I know when all of us heard that we were going to get the opportunity to have Bass Live at every tournament in the boat with us, just like the Elite Series guys, is it's really up the ante a little bit. You know, you want to start making those top tens even worse than you did before because that's a great opportunity. I know at Okeechobee, myself and Easton looked back on that one and we were like, think about all the followers that we got on social media that now plays such a big hand in sponsorship mm -hmm. uh, dollars and things like that. They, that did a lot for us specifically, you know, in that tournament for many reasons. Not only was it just cool, it, it does a lot for you. So yeah. that's a game changer in the opens now for these guys competing, not only to make the elites, but for Bass Lifetime. Yeah. How many backgrounds have you seen on the live today where you've caught bass at Washita? Because every one of them. I, <laughs> every one of them. <laughs> I don't catch fish like you, and I hadn't fished in a long time, but I'm excited for Christian to get up to that end of that point straight ahead. I know. Like I know exactly where he's at. And I think I caught like a, maybe a 10 ouncer there one time or something, you know. <laughs> There's 
there's definitely like the golly I rode right by that the other day and didn't even <laughs> check up or stop in there and Yeah, if you were checking up and stopping at different spots, you would never get to the full RPM capability of your no. boat. It would just <laughs> move, uh, move, uh. You hear that about the local guys, they know too much sometimes. That's exactly right. I think a lot of the locals did solid. I saw, did. I saw one, two Derek right now. did solid, Quincy did solid. Kevin Brown. Yeah, Kevin mm -hmm. did solid. If his wife Reagan did saw it on the back of the boat, she did it with Jeremiah on day right. one. So that was that was impressive in its own feet. Getting closer and closer to the end of our coverage time today. We've got a, a, more than an hour and a half, uh, depending on where they are on the lake fishing time, for our ten anglers there, and still Jeremiah Kendi started with the lead and has not relinquished it at any point during the day. Matt Baker back into second place, and all the rest. We'll be right back. There it is, Lake Washita, St. Croix Bassmaster Open. Second stop of the year in these nine opens schedule that we have for you. Presented by seven. Thanks also to Max and Tires. Our live sponsor today. Loving all that stuff. Hot Spring. Visit Hot Spring. Hot Spring, so much history there. I, 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 we've got some other facts that we haven't had a chance to get to yet. We'll, we'll talk about them maybe if we get a minute or two before, before our time runs out. Jeremiah Kendi, though. The local from just up the road, Benton, Arkansas, ruling the roost here on the final day as he did on day number two as well. Matt Baker from just down the road, Glenwood, Arkansas, hanging in there in second place. That's where he started today. Actually, he's tied with Blake Schroeder of Texas at this point right now. Neither of our top two anglers part of the EQ program, so nope. top, top points are going to the third place finisher today, should we wind up at the end of it all, as our Bass Track board just showed us there. Let's get out to Matt Baker right now. Mentioned earlier that last year the EQ qualifiers to the elites averaged 24.8 years old. This year with Ish in there at 49 and Clark Ream at 44. It's gone back up to around 31. <laughs> We've got a couple of old guys wrecking the curve there a little bit. <laughs> yeah. right? well, Joe Weiberg's 42. If you look at uh, Blake Schroeder, he would be the top one. You were saying the two guys at the top, Matt Baker and Jeremiah Kendi, don't get EQ points necessarily. That doesn't mean that the first person gets 200. They'll just get the highest of any EQ guy right, for that yeah, event. Yeah, 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 so for Blake, currently, he came into today in 10th, which had him in 77th in the EQ points race, which basically he got five points at Okeechobee because of how tough it was yeah, for him. He got tough, five tough points. Yeah. He got 191 coming into today. Because he's moved up eight more, he has moved up 10 spots in the EQ race just from those eight points. So it's, it's tight, and every point you're going to gain can help a lot. Take a look back at some of the moments we have experienced today. There's your number one. There's your points leader unofficially in the uh, EQ. Matt Marks from Georgia, coming Georgia from Lake Lanier. Had a quicker start this morning than most. He was our first angler with a limit. Small, albeit, but living out there in the timber with forward facing sonar. A little bit of grass mixed in as well. He found some patches where it was exclusively grass. But it's one of those deals where timing matters, and we thought maybe the mid-afternoon it would be an uptick for somebody like Paul, but maybe he's shifting around trying some things and trying to win this event. A classic berth would, would be great to knock out of the way two events into the season. We had a great tournament, Okeechobee, to start his season here. So he is, he is on the right track, man. A couple of, couple of championships Saturdays in a row and his EQ experience. Andrew Hargrove, Moody, Texas. Been solid through the entire tournament. Absolutely. You said, he, you said he lived in, he's been living in that area of the lake where there's great consistency at times, but also great quality. And we've seen that today. You might not have a limit, but three pounders every time he sets the hook. And a lot of potential to move up, you know, with only having three in the boat. He's got two open spots to do no coaling, just strictly 
beneficial fish. If he catches two more keepers, he can definitely get up there with the quality we've been seeing and scare Jeremiah Kendi. Mm -hmm. Fifth place right now. Started out with a 19 plus in day number one. Had a fantastic opening round here. And if he finishes it uh, any spot higher than where he's at, you know, if he fills his limit and ends up in the top five or anything better than fifth, he'll have his career best finish in the opens. He's gotten a fifth place at the Harris Chain last year. Spot. He had two other top tens too, Ronnie, but he had three finishes below 150. Yes. That was up. a little bit of a learning curve jumping Jeez. out from college fishing to the opens. Didn't get off to the best start. We did have some crazy weather in the first one, and then you have different fisheries you've never been to. Maybe Toledo was for, or was new, uh, you know comfortable for him, and it didn't pan out. Things like that. As we go over to a new angler to the Bassmaster Opens, Christian Ostrand like from. Those. California, Cal Delta region, jumping out after guiding and saving as much oh, money as he could. Ones. One of his mentors, Ishman Rowe, team partner when he is back home and in town. That's a good person to learn from on how to make it to the Elite Series. Ish is off to a great start, and Christian, a top five right now at Washita. He's chasing, chasing Ish in the AOI points or the EQ points. He's Ish is eighth, and he's tenth right now. He's moved up to today. A lot of energy for sure. Not Until he is eat up with fishing, there's no doubt about that. As we say in Arkansas. <laughs> Blake Schroeder, White House, Texas. Boy, talk talking about fast two fishing extremes. mecca there. Sorry. Go oh, ahead, Brian. No, you're sorry, Such. Two two extremes. Gaining, you know, five points after the first event of the season in the points race, and then almost gaining maximum points this week that we were talking about. If you want a shot at the Elite Series, if you do have a triple digit finish, you have to get a single digit finish to counteract it and then go and get a top 30 in the next one to, to make good on it. There's 196th at Okeechobee. Oh, that's... It's a hard one to come back from, but he's that definitely is. made up some ground. Like you said, Ronnie kind of balanced it out a little bit. Picking his strengths, it looks like. Fishing up in the dirty water, shallow, like we've talked about earlier. Guys can come into this tournament, were able to come into this tournament and do what they wanted to do and just find that section of the lake that fell into their wheelhouse. Schroeder, definitely one of those guys that found what he liked to do in fishing strengths this week, making him a dangerous guy on the water. Because we do a 200 point structure for the Bassmaster Opens uh, EQ points race. So with, when we have those events over 200 boats, there are opens EQ anglers who may not receive a single point. You don't want to do that. So as we move to two guys who aren't worried about points, they're just worried about the classics, Tommy, Matt Baker and uh, Jeremiah Kendi. Matt Baker being a local guy too, just always has been consistent around the house, on his home waters, shining here with his chance to dance with the big dogs. Obviously you're seeing some local knowledge come into play from both of these top two guys that, that we have on camera here today. And Matt Baker right. super solid, 17-11 on day one, 16-15 on day number two. He was he was ready to go on Washita, that's for sure. You were admiring it in the studio garage over there, Bo, just during our midday break. The Arkansas Tech champions back in 2006 when we were just the infant stages of college That's bass right. forming, so one of the oldest clubs, and that is where Matt Baker derived from, the Dardanelle region, Russellville, Arkansas Tech. I guess he's a golden boy. Golden boy. We'll yeah. call him the golden yeah. boy. Yeah. yeah. Wonder boy. Well, or sorry, Wonder boy. What Wonder are they? Boy. The gold. There's the they golden have two boy mascots. of the Wonder Boys. What's that? He's the golden boy of the Wonder yeah, Boys. Yeah, there you go. They're yeah. the Wonder Boys, and then they also have like another mascot, the Golden Sons, or something like that. But that's yeah. the women's team, yeah. the Golden Sons. Yeah, because yeah. okay. they couldn't be the yeah. Wonder Boys. Well, if he was the yeah. Wonder Boy of the Golden Sons, then he's you know too many irons in the fire <laughs> you, there. You've been way too complicated <laughs> for me to follow hey, that. You pick two mascots, it's going to complicate us. <laughs> Jeremiah Kendi, what can you say? Big time favorite coming in here and showing us exactly why during the course all day long, really. You know, a guy that comes into this tournament has so much local knowledge to the point of 
to the extent of pulling up on a certain spot, a certain angle with a certain bait, that's dangerous as it gets, but look at what he's throwing. He's throwing a lipless crankbait. Those of us around here that grew up on these waters know that Jeremiah Kendi with a lipless crankbait in his hand is, a, is hard to beat, and then you put him on a lake where he has the exact cast down to a science. He, he's gonna be a hard one to catch up to and just right in his wheelhouse. And like we were talking about earlier, you can tell he's, he's vibing with, with what's going on. He's, he's in a good oh, mood. Yeah. He's just rolling with the punches and, and making do with, with what he's got. It kind of gets sentimental when you've maybe caught a, a four pounder on a point. Maybe it was raining and it was in March and you, you found this spot and now it's helping you win a Bassmaster Open and make the Bassmaster Classic, That's that would get most grown men to tears thinking about childhood memories on a lake that have now gotten them to the, the Mecca tournament of the sport. And you can tell he knows what's around every corner. Every I mean, corner. He, he knows where he's going next. He knows what his, what his odds are at that spot. It's just, a, it's a rare thing, you know, it's a, that sort of mastery, one person, one body of water. Surprisingly, he still has the Phoenix Boats Big Bass of the Day at 3.7. He's got one that he entered as a 3.6 and another 3.0. I'm still banking. Yeah. When we end live at 1.30 Central Time, they still have an hour or so before check-in. I mean, yeah. I'm expecting someone to jump up with a big one. Maybe not win the tournament, but they're going to vault a lot of people in the top five ten. Five or better you're looking yeah. for. Yeah, I think five. It's got to be a five-pounder. I, I can't believe we haven't seen one today. How big, Such? How big is it going to be? Big bass today. Uh, three seven. <laughs> three seven. Oh, you're saying Come what? It's on, already. Suge. It's already been. You're saying the big bass know, of the day has already been like caught. They're getting you get them kicked fired out of the up. Optimus Club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's your official notice right there. there he is. Uh oh. This uh -oh. could be oh, it. it. This it could is. be it. Five two. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, he might be foul hooked. Thought he was big. over two and a half hours since his last catch. Luckily, no one else has made much ground on him, but a little break in the, in the lull. I got two in him now. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that stressed me out. That one, huh? <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. That other one's looking sickly. Two seven See to call. Salad. Mm -hmm. That's what he was sitting in. I need to get rid of a 242 and a 277. 242 is number four. Two fifty-three. Let me see about these fish though. You know what I mean? I can't get rid of this one. Number three, right? What was number three? He's still alive, but I mean, no, but he's a 339 is what I'm yeah, saying. That was I can't the one do that. that. Bait was gone. I got gone. a 335, yeah, the lipless was... a 259, a 339, a 242, and a 270-something, I think. Golly. Can't see this thing in the sun. I need to get rid of a 242. That's what we're going to get rid of, number four. I think Jeremiah will tap in too to the St. Croix Rods bonus as well. Oh yeah. Because he likes to shop at the Browning House and oh. buy St. Croix Rods off dad. So <laughs> he might get some bonus money from that. Yeah. 253. 
Number four. What is that? I think it was. I showed that what they say, a thousand dollars for rods, and if you use seven reels, another thousand dollars or something like that. Number four. Wow. I think Tommy just logged on yeah. line to buy some. Yeah. Right before Money. doing that. How about that? Calling a little bit of good coal, ones. Yeah. Yeah. I did have a little nostalgia this week, Tommy. I was doing interviews, walked to the tanks to grab an angler, and one of the bass staff said, hey, though. hold this bag. And I ended up having to walk across the stage because one of the boaters Man. was with his boat Man. still. No one could walk his fish across, so I had to walk him across. I felt I did a good job. I had 11 pounds, 9 ounces. You didn't drop <laughs> any? You didn't. No, I didn't drop didn't any. Fall. You didn't. Hank didn't let me talk. He didn't let me hold him up. Nothing. <laughs> no. I just had to walk off the stage. He didn't let you do a, a day recap? No. I said, how did I do today, Hank? Let me know how I did. <laughs> Our photographer booed you, though, right? He was. <laughs> yeah, Andy boos everybody. Jeremiah Kendi, a little bit of an upgrade there, but yeah, just over two and a half for a two and a half. And none. What a day for Jeremiah Kendi. If you think I know a lot about a lake and I think I can compete at the Opens, it's a great opportunity to jump into a single division or a single event. See how you measure up. And for Jeremiah Kendi, measured up taller than the rest. Absolutely. Well, we started very early this morning. We started at uh, 6.30 local time. We started before, a uh, half an hour before they were able to take off, as a matter of fact, because of wind and so forth. So our time to, to broadcast fishing has almost come to an end here. I want to remind you that right here on Bassmaster.com, you will be able to see the weigh-in. Thanks so much for being with us today. That weigh-in starts at 3.45 Eastern Time. Live right here. Won't take a terribly long amount of time. And, uh, everything's made, uh, we'll make everything legal. And we bring him across the stage there. Once again, appreciate it so much. Bo Browning, excellent. Yes. So great having you. Oh, you get the award for outstanding hair. I mean, Thank you. best hair. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see that one being, being, being eclipsed this year. Oh, good. See you at weigh-in. We'll see you at the weigh-in.